Yeah, for, for once, I as, mean, for it, once as my doctor, I finally listened to what you told me to shit. do. Shit. For once. <laughs> don't listen to me and don't drink Trulies. <laughs> <laughs> as you're sucking one back. Oh yeah. my God, you do have a Truly. Why did you. Why is that here? It was in a sack, bro. It was, it was in, in my sack. sack. What's in the dog yeah. sack? The Truly. It's a tropical punch one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Here you go. Uh, yeah. Yeah, let's show everyone that thing. Yeah. You, you got to be different every now and then. Every once in you a while. are definitely different. <clears throat> I love your shirt, by the way. Thanks, my bro. shirt, dude. Wait. That no, that's fucking oh. good. That's. <laughs> oh, I got to clean it in here. Calmer than you are. <laughs> From Walter. Yeah. Walter. Big Lebowski. Uh, hey, welcome back to the most unprofessional little podcast there ever was. Mm. Yeah, episode one hundred nine. Yeah, no. no. Yeah, one hundred three. 103. Oh, okay. I think 103, 104, somewhere Three. around in there. Three. Uh, joining us on the show tonight, yeah. Cal White. Cal White. Ooh. Thank y'all for having me on yeah. <clears throat> Whiskey Abs- Bros. Thanks for Why? being here, man. Yeah. Why are you here? <laughs> man, I'm just I'm a Decatur guy. I've known Chance forever. And uh, I actually ran into him up at Trinity one morning. And, and uh, a buddy of mine, Jiu Jitsu friend of mine, actually, Ty Rambo, had been on the podcast. Yes. And, I believe y'all had talked to him, and my oh, name yeah, came up dude. some way or another. I, and, yeah. <clears throat> and so I ran in, or he said, hey, I was just, uh, your ears must have been burning. He said, because I was talking to the Whiskey Bros about you, and they said they wanted to get you on the podcast. And then I ran into Heath and Chance up at uh, Trinity, yep. and they were so like, hey, you want to jump on? I'm it's like, meant yeah. to be. It's meant to be. It yep. was just fate. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Here we are. This yeah, is like 103 episodes in the making right here. <laughs> <laughs> finally, finally, people are like, okay, maybe yeah. you guys are a little bit serious. But yeah. We're not. We're not totally serious. Right. We're unprofessional, but yeah, slightly serious. Yeah, Tom yeah. Rambo. He was telling us when he was on the podcast, he's like, "Man, I got this smoking hot dude that I know <laughs> that would be perfect for this." I was like, "Let's get him on." And then he told us who it was. And he was like, "Yeah, no, we know Cal. I yeah. love yeah. Ty for that. Yeah, I he was surp- Ty for He was surprised that we knew you. Don't like, don't you know this is Decatur and everybody Every knows one. everybody. Everybody knows yeah. everybody. Or she married a local gal, but yes. I did not. And yep. everybody that I meet, she's like, "You, you know everybody, don't you?" I'm like, <laughs> I don't know what Shit. to tell you. Yeah. And, and Ty was supposed to be here, right? Am he I was. not mistaken? He was. Yeah. yeah. But, but, he, but he had some. He, he works so his hard. His wife told was, him, yeah. no. We're going on a mini <laughs> You're not going episode. on the podcast. Yeah. And he was commitment. like, yep, uh-huh. I'm not going on the podcast. I think, I think that's what happened. He just he just come up with the story of, oh, we're yeah. going on a mini vacation. Has he been yeah. on one or two? Twice. 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 Yeah. Gone twice. Okay. Yeah. What was the second time we had him on? I feel bad now. I think we were just BSing. Yeah, we were. It was It was just... Yeah, the first one out. was the first one was pretty deep. We we've been a lot like. Yeah, we kind of got a little deep, deep on the second one. We were talking religion, weren't we? Yeah, well, it was starting. Ooh, okay, starting kind of both on those. Yeah, but. but yeah, the bluegrass music for the intro that was at your request, and it was like a change of course. Really? Was, yeah, it's fitting though because Cal was just telling was that us drinking like, that his, night. Like probably, probably, <laughs> yeah, probably, probably God. so. You were Madness. telling us your family grew yeah. up. Uh, or you grew up in a family that played bluegrass. Yes, sir. Yeah, my uh, my family had a band called White House Harmony that was pretty well known on the bluegrass circuit. Uh, hmm. They played out at four, um, Six Flags for 14 or 15 years. They Holy had a cow. Western Heritage Days. They went to Branson, made all the bluegrass festivals. My granddad was the um, lead guitar, yeah. acoustic guitar, taught himself how to play. And uh, my aunts and cousin and grandmother were vocals and fiddle and my cousin played upright bass, and anyway, so it was yeah, it was a good it was a good thing in my upbringing. Good memories at all mm-hmm. the family get-togethers, and Where, dude, uh, that's pretty cool. Was it, there anybody in the band that was not family? Uh, yes, we had a banjo player, or they had a banjo player, and actually a couple of banjo players. But ironically enough, my dad plays the banjo and guitar too, so oh, he no still kid. plays. He plays with uh, some of the local. Yeah, uh, cowboy church groups and mm-hmm. stuff. I've and heard so. that's the hardest in, uh, instrument to really learn and master is the banjo. Yeah. Banjo, get yeah. them fingers going. Yeah, with yeah. The yeah. Picks and, be... man, he... and they're, and they're <clears throat> dual string. Like every string is two strings, right? Uh, I believe is so. That right? Or mandolin? That's mandolin, right? Maybe that is mandolin. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like so. they do have like double string banjos. I think. I, I, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not talking about anything. I know anything mm-hmm. about. But <laughs> 100%. Yeah. again, hundred percent. A lot, we're, lot we're, of bluegrass music in my family, though. So. Dude, I know those dudes. Like those bluegrass dudes can just circle up with anybody yeah, and then great. throw down. Yeah. It's like, hey, you want to yeah. go play some music? And then they get together and they play some music. Yeah, the earliest days of my childhood, I'd, <clears throat> I'd go to those bluegrass festivals with my papa, and he'd take me over there. And, man, he'd just sit down with his guitar with a bunch of guys, you know, and they'd just start picking and singing. And, and it just goes. And it just keeps on going. So you know, long. God loves bluegrass. Yes, just sir. Like, I'm going to sprinkle you all with some talent, <laughs> and you guys are good to go. They used, yeah. to, they used to yeah. do that up at Trinity Street. 
Did they? Yeah, no like, like a guitar circle, I think is what they call oh, it. Yeah, my cool. old man went up there yeah. and did it. But yeah, that's yeah. how that was. They just yeah. one not Trinity Street Coffee, Trinity Street. Coffee. Like they, oh, they would meet the up there shops. at the coffee shop. Yeah, yeah. So why is that yeah. cool? And then if you get like a bunch of hippies in a drum circle, that's kind of fr- frowned upon. <laughs> because <laughs> that, like one of them turns into the big old circle jerk. <laughs> and, yeah, it's, the, the other one is like righteous. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. One's, yeah. See, yeah. one's kid How friendly. Middle. The other yeah. one's not. <laughs> Dude, maybe, maybe one circle. Just they put don't smoke bit. weed, and the other one they do. Maybe. Get out of my go. shop, you damn hippies! Dude, I yeah. bet you, I bet you that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Love the music. Bluegrass music is uh, man. I, I hear it on the radio now, and it just resonates with me anyway. But, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah, there's something soulful. Like I- anybody that is into <clears throat> music, like it, there's something that speaks to you. Something yeah. soulful mm-hmm. and wholesome about it for sure. Yeah. I do love me some Allison Krauss. Yeah. Yes. Oh, mm-hmm. she's yeah. Oh gosh, and, and she's like set apart. She's an angel absolutely you know? yep. yeah it's like what do you mean by that i that, it's like she's a pure is he trying to say she's hot and i don't know <laughs> no it's like it's like more way. than hot right it's like <laughs> okay. it's like a level above hot ah uh, so beautiful yeah. it's like it's like angelic beautiful yeah. angelic yeah. yeah heavenly her voice yeah. like everything about her huh yeah. okay is, yeah her and the, uh keith whitley yeah uh, yeah collaboration man that was gold but, yeah. yeah if you were 20 something years old met a chick in the club and told her she was angelic might not go yeah, so well yeah, for you wouldn't i mean, I mean <laughs> first of all you can't you can't know that you can't meet somebody at a club and be like okay you you are angelic i bet it happens all the time I bet no I, I, like you can say what you want but it's going to be a lie it it's may like, work you know honestly it may right. work it may it depends it's on the true yeah it, it may actually Could be the right one yeah. those 20 year olds these days probably don't know what that word even yeah is. Oh, yeah you're man. probably right Does or or they're going to get pissed off because you're identifying them as a angel mm, female yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. They, they may. There's some spin on it. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you're getting and too religious canceled. or yeah, whatever. Does anybody else's <laughs> wife like uh, get them their husbands cornered into watching um, what is it the the thing where you they talk to each other in a pod? Oh my god. Uh, yes. Wife. Yes. Wait. What? No. Yeah. no. no it's, you it's know what blind. I'm It's called like Love Is Blind. <laughs> love Is Blind. Yeah. Love yeah. Is no. Blind. I don't watch it. Yeah. Melody watches it like really? crazy, and oh. that's why I have an outdoor man cave. It's so yeah. accurate. I can't. So watch So what's this the crap. premise behind the show? I don't know. Anything so the whole about show, it. you start out, you don't, you get, you don't get to see anybody. Yeah. Uh huh. And you go in the pod, and you're talking to them through a. A screen, if you will. The concept like, are is... Are they you, strangers? Yes. yes. They don't know each other. So the no. concept okay. is you're getting to know them strictly on them, not their looks mm-hmm. whatsoever. Yeah. It sounds kind of cool. Yeah. It does until like you're total... Let me just throwing stuff out here. Let's yeah. just say you're really, 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 really against dating fat chicks. <laughs> Okay. Hey, you know, I'm it's talking like about some like, people. Some people do, yeah. Yeah, some okay, people or, or we can might say, be or against that. Or we can say that. skinny chicks. Let's go with skinny chicks. Okay. We, and, and, yeah, then anorexia, you, yeah. and then you're like, man, done. this chick is so awesome. This chick is so awesome. I'm, I love this chick. I love this chick. Let's get married. And then they open the screen, and she's this this bean pole. And you're like, <laughs> Java the Hutt walks out. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How, yeah. how often does that happen? I don't know. I've never, not, most I've of the never people are like it. pretty good looking on there. Like, yeah. There's not really any other I mean, people. they got producers putting this yeah. together. Oh, it's yeah, it's just sure. like the yeah. other, what's the rose? The one, uh, yeah, bachelor. the bachelor. It's just yeah. like it's full of but shite. Inevitably, I'll yeah. end up watching that with my wife, and Me I'll be too, shit man. talking no. it the whole Me time. Too. I'm like, this is so stupid. And then two yeah. hours later, I'm like, you're still sucked. In. I'm, yeah. I'm, right, I'm yeah. right here. No. Yeah, I haven't moved. No, because no. it's it's melting your goddamn brain. <laughs> That's what it's yeah. doing. Because after a while, you're like, oh, I think she, I think she really cares for him. Yes. My favorite then, ones are when they're uh, they tell each other they love each other on that pod. Oh yeah. It's oh. called, and then yeah. cry when everyone doesn't reciprocate the feelings uh-huh. and all that. I'm like, y'all have known each other for what five days? Five maybe? days. <laughs> I know. I know. So well, that's the same sight. thing with the, the I think angelic <laughs> man. I tell angelic. you, I think you'll be angelic. able to get over it. Yeah, and that's yeah. the th- same thing with the the rose yeah. TV show, whatever the hell it's called. Yeah, Bachelor, Bachelor, Bachelor. You okay. see all these yeah, people getting married, but then like three months later, they're they're divorced. And I'm like, oh yeah, what well, do you expect? Just... You dated the dude yeah. for two months, and yeah. it's like, oh, he's I, the one. I've yeah. never, wa- thankfully, I've never watched an episode of that. Uh, I, I how long you got to be married before you know what marriage is? Oh man, at I, least three years. Yeah, I'd say that's a good starting point. Yeah, because yes. the first the first yeah. year you're in the lovey dovey stage, everything's awesome. Uh-huh. Sure, everything's awesome. <laughs> Second year, you're getting into the oh shit. Yeah, that third year you're you're fighting. Yeah, yeah, you're you're, you're figuring out. 
can I live with this for the rest of my life? And then after the third year, it starts, it starts getting into a little yeah. cruise. It, it took me and my wife about 10 years. Yeah. 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 She, that's what yeah. I would say. I she's would, a, yeah, she's yeah. a firstborn. I'm a firstborn. And uh, at one point uh, when we yeah. had our first child, I said, you know what the problem is, honey? I said, we're all firstborns, mm. and we're all trying to control the situation. Oh, yeah. And I said, that is the issue. With, that's what's going on right yeah. now. So we yeah. probably just need to kind of figure it out. Right? Yeah. <laughs> They have a word That's called it. communication. Yeah. Or the yeah, other, the other it's C all, word. It's all, it's all flighty Compromise. notion. It's all flighty notion until oh, you actually yeah. have to do it. I know yeah. I'm out of the contest, but who's been married here the longest? Mm. I'm, I'm four years, so that's why I'm out. 20? You got that's pretty long. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I'm going on 14. 14? Okay. Uh, actually, I think it's longer than 20, but we're going to go with 20. Yeah, we're going up on 23, 24. Damn, nice. so it's you. You've... Yeah, I, I really got to think about this. Okay, May 2001. Yeah, 23. 20, no, 20, 24. Yeah, 24. You're rolling up on 24. Yeah, rolling up on 24. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah, I'm rolling up you on 14. You round up, right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. When you're married that long, you just round up. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's crazy, though, is, okay, at seven years, I thought, okay, wow, this was like, it's it's taken us this long to figure this out. Mm. And then at 10 years, I was like, okay, it's taken us this long to figure it out. Yeah. And I'm still saying that. So I think like that benchmark gets longer and longer yeah. as I don't think time goes on. Figure it out. Yeah. I, I mean, don't, just, I don't think you do, right? No, you figure stuff out and then you, sure. and then you there's keep different working. phases. Yeah. 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 Mm. And then yeah. something really. else that's going to come along <laughs> yeah. and you're like, there's always new nuances Damn to overcome. But if you take, if you take a moment and really like just look back at all the stuff and bullshit that you've overcome together, mm -hmm. it's a pretty cool thing. Oh, yeah. I could tell you one single thing that we've, ever fought about yeah bingo so we, we okay. had that conversation the other night like all the fights we we remember having the fights but the thing is we never remember what we were fighting about mm -hmm. but, it's always probably some little thing that y'all are true. getting into to try and yep. expose some bigger thing that y'all need to talk about that yeah. usually how at, you know usually how it works but it's yep. fucking psychologic it is. but we're not here to, <laughs> yeah. we're not here to talk about holy matrimony i mean maybe okay okay, <laughs> okay. we got okay. him going like, he's like, yeah minute, okay so on. so it's like, say we had a younger bro that was just getting married. What would you tell him? Run for <laughs> the hills. Run for That's funny. That song was in my head. Yeah. No, but that can't be the answer. It's like, what, what's one I mean, one it could half? be the answer. <laughs> okay. I, I, I tell you, when I run into people that are, you know, young guys or whatever, young girls, I'm like, hey, at least wait till you're 30. It's a good mm. advice. Have a relatively decent paying job yeah. and you're financially sound and you're or at least you're headed in that point. direction and okay. that way when you get into kids and you get into the marital issues finances may or may not be the problem at some point everybody goes through that uh, scenario but mm -hmm. if you got a good job that at least helps right yeah. you right know? and both it, of you, it, yeah. it takes a big problem off the table yeah. Yeah. Exactly. okay you're, okay at 30 your, like your headspace is totally different Absolutely. too like like from your from 20 to mm -hmm. 30 you become such a different person yeah yeah doing anything with any kind of commitment in your 20s not a great idea yeah your yeah. brain fully de develops the uh rationale and all that's that true sort of thing, dudes so. are, are are immature as hell <laughs> at right. the age of 20 yeah yep Still develop until I'm, 25 I'm, or 26, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. I'm, 40, yeah. I'm 44, and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm always still, questioning I'm myself. I like some of the, <laughs> the stuff that I'll say. I'm like, am, am I really a 40 year old man? Yeah. Like, yeah, thinking are. this way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, my you wife are. says I'm a little kid. She's like, "You're, God. yep, <laughs> like, married to a child." I'm, I'm like, pretty, "I'm pretty sure all of ours said, yeah. has said that once or twice." <laughs> now they just call it dad jokes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I still don't know why you're actually on the show. Uh, you know, I don't know. You're they, just a cool guy. Well, no, mean, he's right. got he's got some stuff going on. I've okay. known Cal forever, and thankfully, you've always been on like the good graces of the side of Cal because I've seen sides of Cal like <laughs> like you, you don't want to. No. Jack with. No, no, no. Yeah. Even before he did jujitsu, like Cal was just known around, like, you just kick people's asses. Yeah, I wouldn't jack with you. I wouldn't. I'd, I'd be like, okay, let's make this work some other way. Man, honestly, I, I grew up riding bulls, and so I rode bulls for 15 years, and, um, you know, I, rodeo, cowboy lifestyle. It's just the way it is. Whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not drinking whiskey right now because mm -hmm. my wife has kicked me off the whiskey multiple times okay. many years ago. We do have other spirits available. Yeah. I mean, because it, like, it, you know, I got again, it truly. You want a truly? Uh, truly, <laughs> truly I do. <didn't> like <laughs> so anyway, but you know, some of that stuff comes with it and I'm not, you know, honestly, I wouldn't advocate for that for younger kids to go through that stuff. And, but yeah. you know, we had a good time and we probably did some things we shouldn't have done. And, but I tell you, I wouldn't mess with that guy. 
Because he'll just pull out a gun and shoot you. I mean, so, he, he shake his hand, and he's like, golly, yeah. like a grizzly bear. You know? Yeah, that's the thing, man. Him. It's a whole Teddy, different world. Like, the fights that we all had as teenagers, you know, you don't know what's going to be the outcome now. Somebody's going to pull out a knife or somebody's going to pull mm. out a gun. It's not yeah. just like. Or post some shit to social media. Oh, yeah. Or you get yeah, exactly. You know, it could be that's just as worse. deadly, right? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. No, yeah. so I, I do jujitsu to kind of, you know, it helps kind of get some of that just aggression ag- aggression or whatever you want to call it i mean just kind of get some of that stuff out and yeah and um you know character builder and, how long have you been doing jujitsu uh, about four years now okay yep got my purple belt recently and um really enjoy it me and ty rambo actually we, what we, color is his belt uh blue he got his blue belt is so do the, the, the belt lower right we don't i don't know the color yeah, he told us but I can't do they that. follow karate like the darker the color the better you are or pretty much yeah. like okay yeah. white green it goes white blue purple uh brown black interesting wow okay. and so. then there's different stages of black yes yeah, so it starts and then you start getting your degrees you know your tape okay. or whatever you want to yeah. call it yeah okay stretch. but uh every five we're talk, years we're talking about belts by the way just in case somebody I'm, just list just tuned in to the like moment that, that I said, five seconds there's different stages of black yeah we just yeah. want to make sure we're talking about belts <clears throat> sure but, but you know honestly i got into jujitsu I got my son into jujitsu uh, originally, my oldest boy, and um, you know he started playing flag football and didn't mm-hmm. really like the kids kind of pushing on him and stuff. So I thought, you know, we need to get into something where he's used to some, you know, can get used to some contact. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we got him into jujitsu, and he did it for about six months, and then they started, you know, you know how it goes. The instructor started talking to me, hey, when are you gonna roll? And yeah. So then I just naturally made it in there, and then my younger boy, now me and my two of my boys do it so okay we've all been training about four years my oldest boy's been training a little longer about four and a half years and nice. it's been good you know it's a father-son thing we can do together and talk about and have in common and yeah get and promoted up together and it's you know been a lot of fun and they're yeah, learning cool. self-defense respect and and all kinds of stuff through that i'm sure yeah and it, that's the other thing you know boys are rambunctious and it yeah. provides a you know an, an outlet a controlled outlet for it yeah. and um, they get to go in there and you know submit other kids and other kids get to submit them and yeah. then They've competed in some tournaments, and it's it's been cool. It's been a really great experience for all of us. Oh, you know? Jiu-jitsu is no uh, fists or hands, right? No, it's no. all just grappling? Yeah, it's all grappling. Basically, okay. you know, if you watch the UFC, it's all that groundwork that they're doing minus the minus the uh, punches. You know, okay. there's a lot of wrestling integrated into it, judo integrated into it, you know, some takedown stuff. And okay. So, um, you know, jiu-jitsu started out in Brazil, and it's morphed. You know, there's a lot more wrestling and mm-hmm. judo interjected yeah. into it now that's been up here in the United States. But uh, man, it's it's really growing as a sport. Did you ever yeah, go watch no uh, Philip Miller back in the day? I feel like you know. It's funny that um, you asked me that, but yeah. So I knew that I knew Philip. You yeah. know, we all kind of used to hang out because he dated uh, Kelsey at one point. Yeah, we ran in the same circles. Yeah, all ran in the same circles and stuff. And and uh, so whenever I started training, it kind of all came back to me. I was like, yeah, I remember Philip doing it, and he trained at the gym that I'm at. Yeah. And um, but then he went over to like Australia, and now he's like up in Colorado. He's up in Colorado. Funny story, <clears throat> I went to Turks and Caicos this summer, or this summer on vacation. Me and my wife and some other folks from here in Decatur. And um, so I was like, hey, while I'm in Turks and Caicos, I'm gonna drop into the local jujitsu gym. Can so, you you can do that? Yeah. Oh, call, okay. I called him up. And I go, hey man, you know, or I didn't call him. I uh, contact him through Instagram. I said, yeah. hey, you mind if I drop in, come roll with y'all while I'm in, you know, on the island. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, man, drop in. I said, cool. So um, really about the only time I could do it. it was really early in the morning. I get up early anyway. Yeah. So I went over to like a 6 a.m. class, 6.30 a.m. class that they had and rolled with them. And I was talking to them and talking to the head guy there. And I go, huh. <clears throat> I said, uh, I don't even know how Philip Miller's name came up. <laughs> But he knew Philip because he was from oh, because huh. he was from Colorado. Yeah, I, and so I said, okay. I think there's a guy from Decatur that moved to Colorado in a roundabout way over many years. And he said, Yeah, I know Philip. He said, I've trained with him. At, they trained at the same gym together. Oh, and I so I mean, it's small world. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, but it's it's kind of like Fight Club. Yeah. Because you can just drop into somebody else's gym and, and and roll around with somebody, but you can talk about it at least. Yeah. Club, yeah. I like yeah. Fight Club. You can't talk, can't about. talk about it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We. Yeah. So I run into jiu- uh, jujitsu people everywhere. We were at the Spartan race this, a couple weeks ago, and uh, man, everywhere I look, I was seeing jujitsu t-shirts. Walking, yeah. you, you know, you can walk up and have something in common with them, you know. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it's real similar to rodeo in a way. Um, people ask me about it. It's a real similar similar mentality, mm-hmm. uh, except you're not getting on a buck and bull. You're something that doesn't give a shit if you live or die. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's and, okay. So so could he do <clears throat> jujitsu? Uh, yes, you could, but I wouldn't want to roll with you. No, I'm <laughs> no, I'm I have a weight I'm advantage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, they, that's I got gotcha. you. That's the I guess the beauty of it is that they say anybody can get into it at yeah, any time. Really? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, and that, that's the uh, the saying is the the best time to start jujitsu is when you're 
four or five. And the sec- or the first best time to start jujitsu is when you're four or five. And the second best time is now. So, mm. wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Anthony Bourdain got into it yeah. late in life. Like after he was yeah, 60. You see what I happened think. to him? Ashton oh, Kutcher. Was, yeah. And, uh, uh, Maynard Keenan from yeah. Tool. He yeah. started with. Yeah, uh, really? he did. Yeah, yeah. He ran in a circle that. Um, and he's still alive. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. doing well. I got he you. started with Muay Thai or something <clears throat> like that. Um, did you Which ever is do like any a strike. That's a. That's a striking yeah, yeah striking art yeah knees and uh, i just know it from like and, street fighter yeah the the perfect combination yeah. really is some type of some form of striking art and um jujitsu or grappling art you know yeah. so a lot of people okay. train muay thai they'll cross train muay thai and uh brazilian jujitsu and that's you got the stand up and the ground game as well so okay that's yeah. pretty cool so so what do you do at jujitsu it's like so you go how many days a week uh i'm usually i probably average two days a week Okay. With three kids, so I'm, you know, yeah. some some weeks it's three, but I average about two. So you show up and you just like roll. Yeah. So usually in the class, it's um, you know we do about thirty minutes of drilling, you know, okay. technique, and then about thirty minutes of rolling. Okay. R- uh, you know, roundabout, you know, where you have five or six minute rounds or three minute rounds or four minute rounds, mm-hmm. and you just rotate through everybody in the gym, and you know, you roll with some white belts, you roll with some. You know, blue belts, purple belts. It's like sparring, except yeah. you're grappling. Yeah, you're but on the ground. The thing yeah. is, though, like, it, there, it unlocks something just, like, primitively necessary, though. Because I've never, ever once talked to somebody that was like, yeah, I tried jiu-jitsu and didn't like it. Yeah, Everybody true. that gets into it is in it for life. I I hadn't actually thought about that. I've never talked to anybody who was like, there's, there's yeah, just, it's just not for me. It must satisfy, like, some... Yeah primitive thing that's built in us that absolutely that's what we need to do well i think innately mm. we all have that kind of fight mentality for yes. the most part down yeah. deep somewhere and i think um you know a lot of people may or may not be willing to get into a street fight or a bar fight or right. whatever it is and they come in there and they go they've seen it on tv and you know they come in there and roll with us and we flip them around and choke them and everything else and they go man <laughs> this is wild when can i have some more and you either go i'm coming back for the next class is which is what i did because yeah. i'm like i you know i walked in there like you were talking about earlier i was like i thought i was pretty tough right? yeah and that's kind of you know typical guy yeah thing, right <laughs> yeah and oh yeah i'm fine you know i can fight and whatever else so uh, I walked in, th- in there for that first class thinking I was pretty tough and found out real fast that I wasn't. And, uh, you know, neon belly. Is that when Ty oh. choked you out? He was telling us about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's coming for you, Ty. <laughs> That's why Ty's not here tonight. That's right. Yeah, he's been lying. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no. He's like, they're going to call me out. Yeah, no. No, there's the – what's the chick that trains us sometimes? Jen Rob? No, the other one. Oh, T- Tina. Tina yeah, Steven? She, yeah. yeah. God. Yeah. She's a like, She scares me, yeah. man. I'm like – she does jujitsu up there. Her son yeah. uh, Colton rolls with my boys, and uh, right now she's hurt. She's yeah, uh, shoulder, shoulder injury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, that, uh, good girl. I still guarantee she she could choke y'all out. Oh yeah, oh, she Tina? that's why I said yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Oh yeah. How do you know this? Because you haven't come to work out with us. No, oh, I yeah. know Tina. <laughs> you know I know Tina. Tina. Oh okay. Yeah, from the old days of J. Robs. Okay, yeah, we love Tina. She kicks some ass, yeah. man. Yeah, she got a double leg takedown on her that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just, be, I mean, uh, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, are we still talking about jujitsu? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tina, we were talking about jujitsu, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, no, she is tough and she, she does Muay Thai. Okay. Yeah, she trains Muay Thai really? and uh, has actually fought in some competitions and stuff. And yeah. So she's got the stand up and the ground game and tough chick. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I carry a gun. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> when the chick start. But, you know, honestly, doing jujitsu and martial arts and stuff, it helps you realize it takes that kind of, like, tough guy stuff out of you. Oh, yeah. Because then you go, hey, you know, I'm good. You yeah. know, if somebody runs up on you, you're like, mm, nah, man, I'm good. You know, yeah. and yeah. Uh, it just makes you realize that there's always somebody out there that may or may not be tougher, and you never know who you run into that may do martial arts oh, or yeah. have a fight background or... Or they've got a 44 Anaconda in Yeah, that too. Pocket. And it just takes some of that stuff out of you. It's like, hey, man, ah, I'm good. I'm going home. Yeah. You know, i got my kids at the house. Yeah. i got a career or whatever. you got a life to live. Like, yeah. we've made it this far. I would like to keep living now. Yeah. Like, back when, you know, yeah. young and stupid, we didn't think about long term. Now it's like, hey, we've made it this far. Life's good. Yeah, <laughs> Life's good. I like Absolutely. this. Yeah, no, I like I, this. You start getting a little comfortable, and you got some things, and you know everybody's yeah. kind of rocking along, and you've gotten through <laughs> 10 or 15 years of marriage, and you've worked through some of that, mm-hmm. and you're like, you know, I don't Why? want to overcomplicate my life with sure. legal trouble. And Oh, yeah. Did you ever meet Will Wright? They own the art shop in town. He and his wife, Kirsten Wright, uh, they made all the, like, the pottery stuff. Um, we had him on the show. We did a little documentary with him too. But oh, anyways, cool. he's a he's a professor, and he he uh, he was talking about like as our species, we're so damn anxious now because we're so comfortable. Yeah. And you were talking about like there's that primitive necessary thing within us, like yeah. where we we need 
the fight, the outlet, the, yep. the physical challenge. altercation or the challenge, whatever. Yep. And as a species, like if you look back through history, we've always been just beating the shit out of people, going to war, battling yep. over territory. It's just kind of what it's been in, until the last 50 years. And we got no outlet. Yeah. Yep. Except for whiskey. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, that's, <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, society is it gets a little more comfortable and there's more, you know, things are more accessible and all that and things aren't challenging to do any longer. Yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I think that in innate, you know, desire to want to do difficult things, which would be jujitsu, yeah. you know, like I said, mm-hmm. I've you know done some Spartan races and yeah, so that you sort just, of thing. You just got done with the Spartan race, right? I just got done with the Spartan the race. Tri- trifecta. Okay. Yep. Tell us about that. So uh, they have a deal called the trifecta, and Spartan, you know, puts that out there. And um, if you do a 21K, which is called a, be- a beast. And what is that? Uh, 21K. Uh, half marathon. Half thir- marathon. 13.1 miles. Okay. okay. And uh, 30 obstacles. And then they have a deal so called. So it's a marathon plus Plus things. obstacles. Plus mm. off-road. <laughs> trail okay. oh shit yeah so um and then so if you do a beast a super which is a 10k with 25 obstacles which is 6.1 miles and then a sprint which is 3.1 miles with 20 obstacles all in the same year that's called a trifecta well they have a deal in grand Bay that's called trifecta weekend so not only can you get your trifecta by doing it in the same year, you can get your trife- trifecta weekend medal by doing it all in the same weekend. 20 miles, Holy basically, crap. in a weekend. Yeah. See, it, before too long, they're going to have trifecta day. <laughs> it's what it's yeah. going to evolve to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're going to be able to get it all in the same day. They also have an ultra, which they call... I think they call it the ultra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, but it's, it's longer than... Longer. It's Holy shit. 50K with, uh, I believe, 60 wow. obstacles. So that's in one day. And you've got. Uh, so that's longer than a, a true marathon. Yeah. But with shit in the way. Yeah, 14. <laughs> yes. You got 14 yeah. hours to complete it. I actually did an, an ultra marathon. I signed up for a 50 mile race last March wow. out here at the Grasslands. And um, and it rained on us for about eight hours. And we walked and ran in mud for about eight hours. And I got 35 miles in. And my lower body was like. You can't Boom. go anywhere. You're done, bro. I was on the verge You're of hypothermia. Done. I came home. My wife had to like, I had to lean on her and get her to help me to the shower. And I was in there in the shower, <laughs> laid out on the shower, trying to warm up. And I was shivering, you know. And mm. well, when I walked in, my son, my son's looking at me, going, <laughs> he just didn't say anything. <laughs> I think my dad's about to die. <laughs> so I'm laying on the shower floor in there, <clears throat> and my wife comes walking in. She goes, "You all right?" I go, "Yeah, I'm good." She goes, "You want some blueberries?" <laughs> yes, I, I go, do. Yes, I do. And she handed me a tray of blueberries. I'm like, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I'm laying in the shower eating blueberries. <laughs> now, the only ultra that I'm doing is Michelob. <laughs> That's it. I'm just saying that. You're so okay for saying yeah. that. Jeez. Anyways, but the uh, the, tri- the Spartan deal is really cool. So my, me and my boys actually did that together. So they have a kid's race as well. Yeah. And if the kids do three races, and they actually did theirs all three in one day. So they did a um, 3K my youngest son did a two one Ks, and then my oldest boy did a three K, a one point five K, and a one K, which is right. roughly around you know four miles somewhere in there. Mm-hmm. And um, but they give you a special medal, and so we did our trifecta weekend together. Yeah, another that's cool. Father son deal. And yeah, that's yeah. cool. So back to the innate desire to do challenging things. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. kind of I don't know. Have you have you heard of the like the peak runners up in high altitude oh, in the yeah. Rocky Mountains? Like yes. people that would normally <clears throat> hike to a fourteen thousand foot mm, peak and say they run. Yeah. We, this was great. I made it in a cup. No, there's people that run mm-hmm. up to these peaks. Yeah, just to, so yeah. you can the, tell yourself, like okay, Pike, that ain't shit. Like Pikes Peak? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. 14,000 feet. Yeah. That's insane. It's nuts. You either make it or you have a heart attack, mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah, there's guys yeah. that are doing 100-mile races. I know a guy that does 100-mile trail races, and I'm like, that's a whole nother level. All at of, once? Wow. All at once. Like, from yeah, start to finish. Yeah, so like that 50-mile race that I uh, entered in to uh, in March – <clears throat> you have 24 hours to complete it mm-hmm. and it's a series of four or five loops that all come back to the starting point so okay. you make a loop 15 mile loop or whatever and you come back to the beginning point and you have time if you want to chill stretch get some nutrition eat. yeah yeah, that's a big thing in this deal there's a lot of carbs and you yeah, know all the, the, the stations they'll have bananas and oatmeal or whatever yeah. you know something that'll give you a little energy as you're moving along there but, but ultimately <clears throat> it's a mental game yeah, absolutely yeah you know it's like prime predominantly it's a mental game predominantly is that yeah. is that what it is the best part for you like the, yes. the aspect you're seeking is the mental discipline to- yeah just uh fighting through my body breaking down like you know even at this trifecta that i did my you know my body's broke down you know like my muscles are sore 
but just pushing yourself through that mentally and, uh, you know, getting through it. And <clears throat> I don't know, I, you know, I spent a lot of years riding bulls and stuff, so I kind of yeah. have a little bit of that where I, you know, I want to do a little edgy stuff, you know, things that are edgy and challenging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so anyway, that, that kind of gives me a little bit of an outlet. You know, I'm, I'm too old to be getting on bulls and, uh, really don't want to, to be honest with you. you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, it's like, when, when did we decide getting on bulls was <laughs> valuable? You know, yeah. when, as, they, when as they got paid pursuit. to do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's it's, right. Yeah, that's, Somebody lined up and they're like, okay, yeah. I'm going to put $5 here <laughs> so I can watch people get on bulls. At the yeah. ranch, man. Yeah. You know, you got the, the old hard bull out there and they go, man, sitting around drinking whiskey. Like, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, man, I bet you can't ride even. Like, I got this. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So there's that's obviously awesome. the, the, yeah. thrills, the, the thrill seeking aspect. Yes. Yeah. And then the, the danger part of it. Yeah. But then there's also the incentivized, like, I can make a little dough doing this too. So yeah. That, that's why I'm sure it became such a big deal. Yeah, yeah. it's like number one badass. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's like I can get on that bull. I can stay on him for eight seconds. Yep. Yeah. You right? You you earn like you badass with some rights. Serious bragging rights. Yeah. 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 It's the independence of that lifestyle too. You know, I did that for 15 years and started when I was a kid and got started. You know, getting on steers all the way through big bulls, yeah. professional rodeo, and um, went to college on a scholarship and all that cool stuff and. Uh, rodeoed in Mexico and got to see some cool things down there. Hmm. Met a lot of cool people. Matter of fact, still. It's like the donkey show. Did you ever see the donkey show? Nope. <laughs> Not that never, time been, never, <laughs> never went. <laughs> hey, but, but speaking of rodeo in Mexico, yeah. those those things are yeah. a different level. Next level. Okay. Crazy. Yeah. Craziness. Like, you've seen those guys where mm -hmm. they, they ride the bull with no hands? <coughs> yep. Yeah, they those, have. Dang, dudes. that's crazy. Say what? Say what? They yeah. ride the bull with no hands. How do they yeah. hang on? They that's all leg and. Yeah, well, they whatever the hell called. Sharp spurs that actually dig into the bull side, which is not not what we went to. Ours was oh, American yeah. style, theirs yeah. was Mexican style down there, but they do do that. That's a cultural thing down there. Yeah. They they ride it with no hands nuts. and they're some, they get not knocked out. Oh and yeah. Yeah. They're so, flopping and But you're talking about people who came from people who would stand in front of the bull with like a red flag and say, "Come get me." <laughs> Charge. Oh yeah. Yeah, come yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah, and bull fighters. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, uh, I've got some buddies down there. They're actually coming up to Mesquite. Um I'm at with them two or three weeks ago, they're coming up to Mesquite Arena and producing one of their Mexican bull ridings that I went to in Mexico all those years ago oh, okay. up here at Mesquite. And so hmm. their deals are huge down there. It's fifty and 60,000 people attend them, and, man, it's wow. really cool. It's a big deal. Is uh, this a rodeo? It's just a bull riding. Oh, just yep. bull Do they still riding. do it in, in ro I think when we were kids, it was, like, called Mexican poker. Mm -hmm. And yep. it was four dudes at a table playing poker, and they yeah. turned the bull out, and it's just like – Whoever's at the table last wins. No, do they still do that? Now, oh, yeah. now it's a rodeo oh, yeah. clown thing, right? Yeah. No, this no, is, this is just four it's dudes. Not called, it's four called dudes. like Bull Rush or something. I've seen. We call it yeah. Mexican poker. Uh, there's there's, there's actually a deal different. now that's really popular. You, you know, if you Google it, you can, you'll can you find it. But uh, they get into these um, blow-up balls. Yep. And they yeah. run around, and the, and the bull hits them, and they burn, you know, yeah. now that looks all fun. over the place. Sitting at a poker table with nothing on, waiting to get impaled for, yeah. for the yeah. most part. I'm not into that. I was like the bull it. riders. I, I liked all the cowboys, but man, the rodeo oh, clowns. Again? Yeah, mm. I like all the cowboys. Oh, I used to like all the cowboys. <laughs> I like all. No, the I'm cowboys. just saying. You know, it's like go to rodeo. <laughs> it's like a lot a of respect <laughs> towards those guys getting on like the big animals. I just thought they were idiots, man. If you need yeah. to move well, over no, to the, I mean, if you I'm, need I'm to move doing, over to the next the seat, clowns, clowns, show, <laughs> the clowns, yeah. like good clowns, do it with Sal and they. Oh, the clowns, yeah, yeah, the rodeo clowns. They're crazy. Now, my dad always told me he's like, if you want to see the world's best athletes, watch the rodeo clowns. Absolutely, those guys are athletes. Those bullfighters, yeah, and especially in today's world. So the guys that work for us at Fort Worth, they it is in between performances, they'll be working out. They're running, mm -hmm. they're mountain biking the yeah. local trails, and they're they're getting it. You know what I mean? It's a, you know, does, it, does that, that profession pay well? Yes, honestly, bull it does at that level. Yeah. you know, at the upper echelons of bullfighting. Yeah. you know, at that level, it's it does pay well. And, and good insurance, I'm guessing, provided by the PBR, or whoever. Yeah, they wow, do. They actually say. have yeah insurance of the PRCA or the PBR, or whoever yeah. they're you know uh, carded with. But um, you know. Yeah, could you imagine that if Dude, you were just a insurance? regular insurance company? And they're yeah, like, what insurance in there? Hey, I want to get insurance. So, oh, yeah, what do you do? What do you yeah. do? Well, I, I'm a clown. Uh, I'm a clown. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I, I entertain. Yeah. Yeah. I entertain. So what do you do for a living? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. you no had insurance ask. company. <laughs> So yeah. you, you said work for us, so let's let's dive into that. Yeah, at some yeah. point in your life, uh, as long as I have known you, you went from uh, – I don't what You went from rodeo into working for – Fort yeah. Worth Stock Show and Rodeo. Yeah, honestly. How'd that happen? I, God. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. really and truly. Um, you know, there's just not a lot of jobs, you know, like mine in the industry for 
old rodeo guys. But uh, again, so I rode bulls, and you know, in the course of that, I went to college on a rodeo scholarship and ended up uh, sticking around and getting my master's degree up at West Texas A and M. Okay, beautiful school. Yeah, beautiful up there in Canyon. And um, so, in the course of me getting my master's degree, I got hired on with the Tri State Fair and Rodeo in Amarillo, and um, as their marketing director. So, and I handled media relations and sponsorship relations and event planning and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And, you know, rodeo, you know, some of the rodeo management and a variety of things, you know, it was a, um, it was a job that was kind of all, in, you know, there was a lot of things involved with it. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> so I did that for about a year and, um, you know, I was previously married up there. And so my, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Okay. But, um, so anyway, that deal didn't work out and I, um, met my reignited a flame with my not really reignited a flame but you know i'd always kind of had a crush on her oh, yeah, yeah. with my wife now and uh it just the stars aligned and there she was <laughs> angelic heavenly uh -huh. <laughs> There's that word again. i mean after after this long you can actually say that yeah absolutely yeah yeah and, and then yeah i won't push her what no anyway. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so yeah so anyway um i moved back home and um in the course of me making the decision to try and get back down here i um uh emailed the communications director at the time and just said hey i'm you know i work for the tri-state fair and rodeo marketing director looking to move back home i've got some experience you know if y'all have something come up let me know yeah well she emailed me and she said hey you want to come on temporarily through the show and help us manage our social media and that was when facebook and all that was like on the rise yeah and I think they had 1,500 Facebook fans at the time, and now it's like, well, I don't know, three or 400,000 that we have. So it was but back in, like, MySpace days. Yes. Yeah, MySpace, MySpace was, was still around. Phasing wow. out. Yeah, it's kind of phasing out. <laughs> Old but, Tom uh, was on his way out. Yeah. Yep. But, so anyway, uh, the Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo hired me. Um, I don't know if I ever said that or not, but uh, the Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo hired me on temporarily through the first show. That was back in 09 or 10, 2010, and um, hired me on temporarily and. Here I sit, you know, 14, 15 years later, and I'm the rodeo mm -hmm. director for the show now, so I manage all aspects of 25 performances of professional rodeo. And Jesus. That's a very all-encompassing position where, yeah. you know, I hire all no the announcers, everybody. Yeah. So, yeah. anyway, it's a big deal. It's over at Dickey's Arena now, and that's yep. a, been a great change for us. Um, wow. So, I, how long has it been <clears throat> at Dickey's? Uh, started at 2020, or excuse me, in 2020. So about uh, what's that coming on five years now? Mm -hmm. I feel bad because I haven't been to a rodeo since it was in the old Coliseum. Yeah, you need so, to come out, man. Well, we got a little one. Well, I guess like, I yeah. guess we're gonna go this year. Yeah, yeah we absolutely. have to. Yeah, yeah. we're obligated. So when, on and, when did they redo Dickey's Arena? Because they didn't redo it. Have they not? It's no, like, I built it from the ground. They up. They built it. Okay, it's brand that's new. What it is. Yeah, it's, that uh, place is phenomenal. By yeah, the way. yeah. You've been out there? Yeah, we no, went yeah. and watched Jordan Peterson there. Oh yeah, great. You bet. Yeah. No, it's a great environment for that. It is, dude. That's cool. That's cool. What happened to the old, uh, what takes place in the old Coliseum then? So we still do a, um, a lot of horse show events during our show yeah. in Will Rogers Coliseum. And um, then another high school rodeo, that we, a scholarship rodeo that we do with the North Texas High School Rodeo Association. But uh, <clears throat> they're actually in the process of renovating that. Okay. And uh, so our general manager right now is kind of heading that up. And yeah. so they're going to go in and renovate it and make the uh, concourse look really, really nice, kind of open up, you know, the lower levels into the arena. Yeah. It's going to be beautiful. So, okay. yeah, trying to bring some life back into that old 19, let's see, 1936 facility. Wow. We moved over there, we moved over there in 1944. Okay. Damn. From Northside. Yeah. Over to the stockyards. Yeah. So, Which cool. still has a rodeo daily. Is it daily and – Weekend. Okay. Friday, every weekend. Saturday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the PBR is kind of, you know, they've got a residency over there yeah. and they do some PBR stuff. You know, Billy Bob's has got a bull riding uh, component to their deal, indoor bull riding. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, it's, um, it's that's hopping the thing down that's there. every weekend? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, down the stockyards. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah. Now you, Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo is only what, four weeks out of the year? Yep. January okay. and February every year and uh, Fort Worth's largest annual event. You know, we yeah. will host um, around 1.2 million visitors annually. Yeah. And, uh, you know, obviously we have a rodeo aspect of it that I manage, uh, 25 performances of rodeo. But uh, we also have uh, three museums on campus. We have a Midway Fair. Mm -hmm. um, we have commercial exhibits, shopping. Yeah, the exhibit barns. hall. That was always a big thing yeah. as a kid, going through the exhibit, seeing all the new tractors. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but, you know, the number one thing that people always say, the reason that they come out to the Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo is to see the animals. Mm -hmm. And so our, our bread and butter is the livestock. Yeah. All of the animals in the barns, all the kids want to come out and touch and pet and look yep. around at the massive, you know, beautiful 
uh, steers and things, you know, mm-hmm. with uh, it's a hair show, so all the, st- the steers have long hair. Oh, so y'all haven't gone slick shear yet? Nope. Ah, oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, still okay. a hair show. So, yep. That's uh, okay. okay so, so for dummies like me, yeah. what does yeah, that mean? Let's go. Let's turn the t- let's yeah. turn the pages way <laughs> way back. Got to remember getting up at like three a.m., four a.m. to load up for that stock show, yeah. and it's always like every time the Fort Worth stock show rose, that's that's when the cold weather shows up in Texas. Mm-hmm. So getting up in those early mornings, but okay, so. Showing your animal, this is pertaining to um, uh, cattle. Yeah. Hair, it's a hair show. He means they have their full length of hair, and you trim it, mm. and you beautify it, and you make it work and be dazzle people. Slick shear means you take a pair of shears and just mm. all, So that way the judges are really seeing just muscle tone and the build of the yeah. animal. But when you do the hair show, like, You've got to you've got to know how to work the hair too. Yeah. Like you've got to okay. be a stylist to an extent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's they're called fitters, and uh, there's an art. It's an art form. Yes. And so there's guys that go. That's what they do. They they have their shears and they go and they fit cattle for people. Like they're, are, they're are they usually gay? Spray on? No, they're not, dude. No. They're it's, not. It's I, I just normal. think about like it's old country. You know, hair people. From, you know, yeah. Yeah. People. Trey, yeah. Trey McKinnon. Yeah. Is he really? Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I love gay people. Well, I'm not. I'm not like well, downing on gay people. Trey's kind of gay. So I mean, but. <laughs> but but yep. they're they're stylists, but they're like straight stylists and they only work on animals. Yeah, yeah. No, okay, they'll, they'll show up you. like comb and hairspray in there and they're Oh shit. Oh, it's legit. They'll have two or three oh, of yeah. working on an animal at a time and you know, they're you know, yeah. they, there's a whole art form to it to make but that. Trey really him. does that? Yeah, for really? a year. I don't know if he does it so much anymore, but yeah. He's uh he's kind of a master at it to be honest with you. Like, he's known for that. And um so people hire him to come fit their cattle and he's done that for Probably years cuz they you know, he grew up showing and yeah. his whole family, you know, oh, raised yeah. Angus cattle and all that sort of thing yeah. and so Yeah, there's a lot of discipline involved. Like it's <clears throat> the good thing about the stock shows and, and kids that do that, you're teaching your kids to be like good stewards for animals mm-hmm. yeah. or of animals. Yeah. To to cultivate the responsibility, the respect, like this is something that depends on you for survival. You're, you're teaching but, them husbandry. Sure, yeah, Absolutely. animal husbandry. Yeah, it's exactly what yeah. it is. Yeah, being yeah, yeah. Or you hope you are. Yeah. Yeah. There's but, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. every, every day you take your you take your livestock to the there's a wash bay for the livestock. Yeah. Wash them, soap them, wax them. No. <laughs> Just wash them, soap them, then you bring them back. You have, like you blow dry them off every freaking day you're there. Like you are this animal is your 100% primary focus. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. But it's not like a pet dog, you know, that you let shit themselves and you just don't clean it up. You know, no, it's like No, you don't so that's yeah. the thing is where these animals are kept. When they do poop or whatever, you've got to you've got to pick it up, you gotta haul it off. I mean it's it's a hundred percent discipline and then you get to the show. So they're working on they're judging you for um, how your animal looks, behaves, how you look, how you behave, they're yeah. and your showmanship too. Yeah. So there's there's a so that's a, no a, small deal. Yeah, no, no it's not. Well, Hell no, it's because yeah. we're Americans. It's kind of small if you're Japan. <laughs> no, well, because they hey. do it all year round with her. Yeah, special that's, well, they're selling cows. that stuff for a hundred bucks an ounce too. So yeah, <laughs> but, well, that's true. But they, there's also like, they on, did they did develop wagyu. Their wagyu on wagyu. the outcome. Yeah. There's a lot of money that gets um, involved, and these kids end up with scholarships. Mm-hmm. Like they they have their way paved based on how they perform or, or how they're judged. Who's paying the money? Uh, yeah, like so, we have an, uh, an outfit called the Fort, Fort Worth Stock Show Syndicate, and they lobby local businesses and guys huh. to donate money towards uh, towards this um, cause here, and then they mm-hmm. they try to get those livestock premiums up higher than you know the market rate. And uh, but you know the, we have one of the largest market steer shows in the country, mm-hmm. and everybody turns up for it because we don't have a cap on the amount of money that that kid can earn at the sale. So when they win the grand champion steer, they go to the sale of champions mm-hmm. and they, the syndicate comes in or whomever or a big donor, you know, comes in and says, hey, I want this steer for 400000 All of that money goes to the kids. Well, these other big shows, that they have a cap on how much you can make because the rest of that goes into an endowment uh-huh. that then helps generate, you know, money for a few gotcha. years. So, so mm-hmm. the 400000 the kid may walk away with fifty. Right, like but, in Houston, for instance. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know Houston did that. Okay. Yeah, they they have a cap on the amount of money you can make. Of course, they're you know they're raising I don't know a million bucks. Oh sure, right. yeah. yeah Houston's kind of stupid is it the biggest, anyway. Is Houston the biggest one? Um, as far as the largest show, yes. Um, or like I said, the market steer show in Fort Worth, mm. you know, the biggest one. But um, because of the amount of money they can make, 
But, um, <clears throat> yeah, as far as the overall show, right. Houston and Calgary from, you know, Houston's indoor rodeo. Mm -hmm. I'm always thinking rodeo, right? Right. But Houston is the largest, I think, and then Calgary's right there with it. Calgary so. is in Canada? Canada. Canada. Oh, hey. Oh, Canada. Canada. Really? They haven't all they haven't all gone soft then. They still got some blue collar. Oh no, folk that's up like there. Western. Yeah, Canada, yeah Western right? Canada. Yeah, yeah. Still, yeah. No, okay. it's like Beautiful. Rockies, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we went. We've been up there three or four times and um, had the good pleasure of being able to go to Calgary and you know experience all of that and then yeah. hop over to Banff and Lake Louise with my wife and. Man, not it's not an ugly place. It is beautiful. <laughs> my gosh. Just so, got some quacks. If you ever get place. a chance, yeah. Yeah, I don't know definitely. If been up there or not, but. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. What are you talking about, Trudeau? We have that. some quacks here too. Oh, if you God, haven't noticed, do we? man, we have some quacks here. Do we're we not ever. doing that tonight, though. No, we're, we're not. not it's like it's a, it's, it's <laughs> no. our last night to actually talk about this. No, no, no not yet. So, Maybe is, did you vote? Uh, I have not voted yet, but I'm going to. Make yes. sure you okay. take a picture of yourself with your sticker, otherwise it doesn't. It doesn't count, right? Okay, got you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, now you, you can't vote until the actual day because early vote. Yeah, it's done. Yep. Oh, okay. Is that Tuesday? Tuesday. Yeah, it is tomorrow. Yeah. No, today's Sunday. Today's Sunday. So. All this bullshit yep. is about to be over. But let me yes. let me ask you this. Back, <laughs> means the back, texts are yeah, about well, to no, be over with. You think it is, but it's not. Let me let me ask you this. So I, I just heard. Hold on. Are I, we what? No, we're going back to cells. Okay. Cows Thank and you. stuff. Yeah. So I've heard, and and it's crazy because I was, and I'm I'm the guy that's been around animals my whole life, but never been to a stock show once. No kidding. Not once. Yeah. Uh, but so I just realized that there's something called a kill cell or something of that nature. A hmm. ter terminal cell. Terminal cell, mm -hmm. like you go and show your animals, mm -hmm. and then they just take it and slaughter it. Which correct? is which is the Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo is a terminal cell. So if mm -hmm. your animal makes a cell, it goes to the cell, they bid on it, it's theirs, and then they we ship it. Yeah, for, uh, for consumption. Yeah. Wow. Which is how it should be because so that's we, part of being um, uh, an, uh, um, uh, a steward of the animals. Like eventually, that, yeah. that's what their fate's like. But be. raising this animal to be food. Yes. Yep. But it's not it, so. It's like not a pet. If, what it's you said a while ago: if if somebody sells their their prize cow at four hundred thousand dollars, <throat> that cow goes to the market for four hundred grand. That's correct. Holy crap! Yeah, yeah, they used to. We used to take them and put them, or the the buyers would then or would buy them, and they could donate them to the Fort Worth Zoo, and the Fort Worth Zoo would put them in their Texas, you know, portion of yeah, the yeah, zoo. Yeah. Uh, but we went to just a straight terminal sale to where. They buy them and ship them. Yeah, but so. if you see, like, like, there's no bullshit that way. That's right. I like no, you know yeah. exactly. Yep. Yeah, but yeah. if that, you see these animals, right? Like they're gonna make some pretty good steaks. Well, that's what I'm. That's what <laughs> I'm, like they're so good. That's what I'm getting at. So that one pampered or that six hundred pampered cows, mm -hmm. surely the god they're not just getting thrown into the. They're eight, going to 80, 80, 20 beef. They're going to Papa's <laughs> Bros. Like they, Papa's I, would, I would hope that's what would happen. Yeah, is they'd, they'd say, okay, these cows are going to. Do you know that how no, the distribution I'm, works after the slaughter? I really don't know if the the purchaser of the animal then gets all of that beef. Okay, I'm not, I'm not certain, but it, you know they go over to standard meats or you know mm -hmm. packing house. It's and up they, to them. Yeah, and it's up to them, kind of what Jeez. where it goes from there. But um, yeah, I'm not but sure. we could. That means we could go pick our steak. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like find our cow and be like. But it's not, it's not just this the grand champion, cow? too. So yeah. what you, the sale part uh, takes place after, like, the, the circle of champions, or what did you call it? Uh, the sale of champions. Sale of champions. Last day of the show. Yeah. Okay. So, but there's still okay. a sale. So what, what does that mean? That means that you are now – yeah, you can explain this better than I can. So You're still going to make some money. Yeah, sale of champions. This, How this, do you get into that? You have so to the sale of champions, yeah, it's basically all the grands and reserves of each breed and all the way down through the show. Um, um, so there's actually a – grand champion steer market steer mm -hmm. and then you get down through the, all the individual breeds and all the champions and mm -hmm. the high placing animals of those shows and including hogs and lambs yeah. we have a ladies on the lamb ladies of the lamb um group that comes in and bids on lambs and we have uh -huh. tallest hog at the trough group that comes in and bids on the hogs and the fort worth stock show syndicate and then you'll have individual, you know. Um, so it's like yeah. it's interest groups. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, like here in uh, Decatur, you know, at the uh, the what do you call it, Wise County Youth Fair, where they come in and mm -hmm. buy some of the animals. Like you have the Blue Ribbons Club, and then uh, what's um, I can't think of the other one. Grand Champion and Blue Ribbons Club, and Buyers Association, the Buyers Association, yep. and so yeah, these are just groups of people, yeah. and they're mm -hmm. like they want to help the kids out. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, mm. that's awesome. Yeah, so there's yeah. a lot of kids that are making money on these sales, and the, and the the money gets to go to Awards College or whatever. 
Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. not yeah. just a grand champion yeah. or a reserve. There's a lot yeah. that's like going scholarship. on. Scholarship. Bingo. Yep. 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 Mm. So, yeah, it, and it promotes the future of the industry and, you know, gives kids a, mm-hmm. a reason to kind of want to do it and, um, you know, continue, you know, continual growth of the industry. It just helps with that. Mm-hmm. You know? is, so the stock show is like every animal? Pretty much, or is it just virtually every animal? Chickens, yes. you got rabbits, chickens, rabbits. So we have a poultry pigeon and rabbits uh, portion of the show. Rattlesnakes and, and a rattlesnake. Screw <laughs> uh, edible. No, yeah. well, rattlesnakes well, are yeah, technically. I believe they're probably edible. offered there for food at some of the vendors. You never know. Yeah, mm-hmm. find some rattlesnakes. Speaking of rattlesnakes, I I uh, had the closest encounter with a, about a four and a half foot rattles timber rattler just. Uh, the other day, me and my seven-year-old were in the woods. Yeah, mm. it's me and him. Same yeah. thing. Came right beside our fleet, man. It man, was I, cold. I was leaned up against a tree, and my son, and you know, idiots. I'm a country boy. I know better than this. <laughs> we shouldn't be in shorts and Crocs or sandals or whatever. Sure. But we're down in the woods, but, you know, but knee you high grass. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I was walking along a trail, and I leaned up against this tree so I could turn around and watch my my son uh, walk towards me, and I was telling him kind of where to go. I was navigating. I say, hey, stay on this trail, or whatever. And as he got closer to me at the tree that I was leaning on, I kind of started to walk off. And I said, just walk up to where I was. And he took a step, and I heard, you know, just a real quick rattle. Yeah. And he goes, oh, my gosh. And I go, get back, get back. You know, and I looked around the tree, and Matt, dude. (laughs) You you were sitting right next to him. I was sitting right next to that to four-and-a-half-foot Tim Rattler that had a squirrel in it. It had just eaten a squirrel. So he – yeah. He was full. He was full. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but isn't it crazy how it hits you? Oh well, it's, man. It's it's like you just see a snake, and yes. and if you're not expecting to see a snake, you just accidentally see one. It's like, boom. Oh, it's, like it, yes. it, it, it slaps you. Yeah. Yeah. We were we were cutting wood down here in the river bottom the other day, yeah. and it was a tree that had been on the ground yeah. for a year. And we're joking, like, hey, watch out for snakes, watch yeah. out for snakes. Uh-huh. Thankfully, it was a cool morning because he, uh, I'm I'm cutting the stump, and I look over, and he's like. He points, and sure enough, here's this timber rattler that slowly, and mm. you know, they're moving, they're they're yep. meandering. He wasn't. Thankfully, the timber timber rattlers aren't really that aggressive. No, you can the diamondbacks; those guys are assholes. Yeah, that was yeah. crazy. Yeah. At you. Never once rattled. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're they're really not aggressive. I've had them on my back porch and stuff over where we mm-hmm. live. So as a crow yeah. flies down your bottom, mm-hmm. uh, it's probably about four miles over to the bottom that I was in when I saw that four and a half footer, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, so they kind of, I guess. Obviously, this is a good area for them because the trees are thick and, yeah. you know, it's yep. mm-hmm. damp grass. and mm-hmm. a lot of animals and not a lot of activity from, you know, human traffic and all that stuff. Yeah. And so I see a, see a lot of them really over the years. I've seen several uh, yeah. big, big timber rattlers, not just little ones. They big get ones. big. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And supposedly out of all the pit vipers, like they're, the timber rattler <laughs> has more potent venom than any of them, even yeah. over the diamondback. I think yeah. that's right. Um, so, yeah. That night that I, after that happened, I was laying in bed and I woke up at like, I don't know, 1230, and I was just like, I mean, I literally audibly out loud said, you idiot. Why were you in the woods with your sandals? Not even so much for me, but my seven-year-old. I'm like, why did you have your son in shorts and Crocs? Why did you allow that? I mean, three foot of grass. Yeah, we do it. We, like, walk around. At night in yeah. the grass in sandals. I know it. So he, he yeah. took a strike from a copperhead uh, yeah, a few years back. Yeah, you he did. Check this out. Yeah. Oh He's man. Got a nice. Oh jeez. Nice battle wound there. Oh, nice, man. nice copperhead. Yeah. Nice. But it was the same way. It was Back just, to what I said earlier about trained. not messing with this guy. He's lived through a <laughs> copperhead attack. <laughs> you wouldn't have thought so at the moment. He was. Uh, he was. Ooh. He was doing a lot of complaining. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was. It was bad. I don't blame you. Man. Until the no, cap- I think you were stoic through it all. It's like you were trying to keep your spirits, and it's like every other word you were vomiting. You're like, <laughs> it was. We're and, and 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 then it's it's like we're I, I'm sitting there thinking, God, thank God that's not me. <laughs> that's oh man. It, yeah, sucked, it sucked for you worse than me, I think. No, you were awesome. Now, once, once that's a good story. So once, so we got to the, got to the ER about an hour later, because I was trying to find this freaking snake, and my body's just trying to get rid of it. Man, it was so it started coming out. I was just start vomiting, <laughs> vomiting. You know the throw up bags at the hospital. Yeah, I filled up four of those things. Oh my! And he was gosh. in front of me just. Taking my full one and then giving me an empty one. And I was <laughs> yeah. Like, so he, he he started yelling at the ER people because it was Decatur and you know how they are sometimes. Oh yeah. And, yeah. Uh, we finally get in there and then I'm so dehydrated they can't get the IV in me of course. So I look and, I, and like I dry heaving at this point. And I looked up at the doc. I was like, it's 
it's going to come out the other end. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they have the IV half stuck in me. I grab the, the, the pole thingy, and me and Doc, here we go. He's running to the shitter, dude. I felt so bad for this dude because I'm on the toilet. Just... <laughs> and he's, he's just... Oh man! <laughs> Holding the IV up in the air for me, <laughs> uh, and we did that about three times. Yeah. So you oh, were yeah. in the bathroom with? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, in the love, God love you, man. Oh. So when you're eight life, man. <laughs> yeah. That's uh. See, you called me. Remember, I don't. You yeah, may not I had remember this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You called and you're like, I'm headed to your house, and and then like <laughs> two minutes later, you yeah. call or Melody Mel, Mel calls called, yeah. and she's like. <laughs> We're going to the ER. Yeah. Meet us there. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I, I got bit, and we had his daughter, and we we were at a Fourth of July party at my father in law's house. Oh man! And we were gonna we were about to go. Uh, we were gonna drop his daughter off, and then head out to our cabin for the weekend. So I told him, I was like, "Hey, man, you know, I just got bit by a snake. Blah blah blah. Get the kids in the car." Uh, and I was like, "We'll just I'll just have him look at it, you know, when because it got it got me right on the I had flip flops on, of course, because yeah, we weren't in the woods though. We were just at my father in law's backyard." And it got me right on my toes, basically. Man. And so I said, hey, we'll just drop her off, and I'll get him to look at it. And, about, like, and so we called him. and said, hey, he just got bit by a snake. We're going to come let you look at it, blah, blah, blah. About five minutes into it, dude, it felt like my whole leg was just <laughs> stuck in lava and somebody taking a hammer just pounding on my kneecap. Dang. Oh, it hurt so freaking bad. <laughs> so I called Mel, and I started getting sweats, dude. I mean, it was, it was terrible. I just read a story the other day about a herpetologist. I guess that's the – yeah, they study snakes and things, right? That's mm -hmm. exactly right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, about a herpetologist that actually got bit handling a snake, a very venomous snake, and instead of going and get it, getting anti venom or whatever it was, documented the effects of that bite and, that ultimately killed him. But wow. that's how that's how uh, much he was into this herpetology, right? Yeah, he didn't get treatment. He's just he was, like, yeah. he was like, oh, I I can survive this. Yeah, I, and you can. and I just was, documented it. Yeah, and, and then was, he eventually died. Yeah, I was reading wow. through through his notes, you know, and um, he talks about getting up and you know he vomited profusely, and then you know not long after that, maybe the next morning he was having coffee and a biscuit and, you know, documenting everything he was eating, you know, and then he was back yep. to being sick again, and then he's eating again, and then next thing you know, it's like, that was it. You oh, know? Wow. I can't laugh at that. It's like Steve Irwin effect, right? Absolutely. You yeah. know, it's like you're going you're gonna to get killed by what you study. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're so into oh, it. Yeah. Uh, no, anyway. Uh, mm. But, yes. like, if you if you get bit... <clears throat> Your chances of survival are pretty freaking good if you go to the hospital get treatment and antibiotics, right? Pretty quick. Well, no, like I think I think it depends on a number of factors. It's like little little copperhead, man, that's pretty freaking dangerous. Yeah. Right? You know, it's like where does it bite you? Yeah. True. You know? On the pinky toe. And supposedly the copperhead is like the least potent about all the pit vipers. So yeah. could you yeah. imagine I mean, dosed with like, we see dogs survive that shit all the time, but yeah. they're dogs. Different yeah. biology. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's uh, like, and and then also, it's 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 not just about loss of life; it's loss of limb. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, there's always that too. Yeah, if like Which there hadn't been not hospitals. A bad alternative if you got. Yeah, right. You know, it's like back in 1830. You know, Heath would have got bite, bit, bite, bit, <laughs> bite, bit. Yeah, so Heath truly. would have got bit. <laughs> then you know he might have just lost his leg. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like, that's crazy. Well, we had a friend. I don't, you know, the Hanlons. Sure do. Robbie yeah. Hanlon yeah. lost his life. Our friend Chris Hanlon uh, yeah. and his family they lost their dad to a rattlesnake bite. Terrible. The, the son of a bitch went out in the back porch to fire in up town. his grill. Yeah, in town by our hey. house. Yeah, fire which we've grill. done a million times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and you know, walk y out there with yeah. sandals and shorts. Yeah. in the backyard. Yeah, I and do he, that in the mornings when I get up and I think about him. Yes, I get up in the mornings and I'll because I'll I leave to go work out like you know around four thirty or so or five. And um, I'll be walking on my back porch, and I'm like, "All right, I need to flip my flashlight on on my phone at least." I think about him every yeah. single time. I'm like, "Cause yeah. I'm like, ah." See, you I know. think about what's, this guy. What's that too? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think. Yeah, it's like, man, he he taught me. Um, yeah. But he ended up losing his life because like, I think he had an allergic reaction or something. There was man. there's something else that compounded the degree yeah, of injury. I think injury. he had some some, some uh, kind of like COVID. It was something else. Comorbidities or yeah. something. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Yep. Yeah. But. Watch out when you go to fire up your barbecue grill. Oh, yeah, anything. Watch, watch don't get bit by a snake. Yeah. Don't get bit by a snake. Yeah. 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 Podcast yeah. name, episode name. Don't, don't, yeah. get, bit don't get bit by a snake. Don't Featuring get bit. Featuring Cal White. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, back, I want to go back because right. I'm not done talking about like the Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo. 
because I do remember like the one time I was there recently was when my wife was running the Cowtown Marathon, and okay, I think cool. Dickie's Arena had just been finished, mm-hmm. and I remember writing you and, and like talking about how awesome like the building fits the aesthetic and the design and the mm-hmm. and the um, the uh, architecture of all the old buildings perfectly. It was yeah. done so freaking well. I remember writing you like, "How did y'all pull this off?" Because it's amazing. Yeah, so it was uh, you know obviously Mr. Bass was the guy yeah. right that uh, made Dickie's Arena happen for Fort Worth. It was a new arena or a concept for a new arena or a remodel or add on had been talked about for eons. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's old plans about taking and lifting the roof of Will Rogers and expanding the seating and doing all of this stuff. And uh, you know, Mr. Bass just you know we were fortunate and blessed to be with the show mm-hmm. in Mr. Bass's. He's our chairman, mm-hmm. or our past chairman now, Philip Williamson, that previously owned uh, William, Williamson Dickies uh, Manufacturing. Okay. Dickies Clothing? Yep. Dickies. Mm-hmm. Dickies yeah. Workwear. Um, he's now our new chairman. But um, anyway, so we were fortunate that he had an affinity for Fort Worth and wanted to see this new arena happen, and he made it happen. And uh, So anyway, <clears throat> to get to the story of Dickies Arena, but it's a, it was uh, developed on a public-private partnership basis. And so okay. the private sector put up a large portion of the money, and really I think it was – Designed as a 50-50 partnership between private sector and the city, okay. Um, <clears throat> but ended, ended up being a little bit more from the private sector. But um, that way they could move the project along faster. So yeah. they actually built Dickey's Arena. I think it was about uh, three years. Yeah. And um, they were able to put in. Mr. Bass is just a stickler for detail. Yeah. And um, so all of the the landscaping around Dickey's Arena, it's all native plants and trees. So mesquites and. Hmm. All the shrubbery is all native to Texas, mm-hmm. and um, you walk in, and there's a variety of different areas in the railing. There's uh, the native plants are built into the railing, and um, you go into the bathrooms because everybody knows that by the, from the Bucky's model that bathrooms are very important. Oh yes. gosh, yes, <laughs> so, yes. Anyway, you go into the bathrooms at Dickey's Arena, and you can see the level of detail in there, and just it's easy to get in and out, yeah. and they're clean, and and the, the, everything about Dickey's Arena just from the intimacy of the events that are held in there and the sound systems yeah. and the technology and just the entire experience being able to walk through the corridor of dickie's arena and being able to see into the the actual bowl as mm-hmm. events are taking place mm-hmm. and all of this thought process was put into all this yeah. you know if you walk out on the plaza and you can it you know you've got a skyline view of downtown fort worth mm-hmm. and yeah it's just all about the experience and Mr. Bass was uh, very integral in making sure that it was. That building looks wow. like it was there wow. 100 years ago. So this yeah. is like Bass Hall else. Bass. This is Bass. Bass Hall. This is Bass Hall Bass, but this is the rodeo arena. Ba- so this is also the only arena that was designed with rodeo in mind in the mm. country. Gotcha. Because he was the chairman of the Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo, and so he has a real affinity for the Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo as well. And thankfully for us, right? So it was developed with um, – rodeo in mind built with rodeo in mind so it makes it really easy from a logistical standpoint for us mm-hmm. to get in there and put the rodeo on and then uh but yeah the architecture back to the architecture there's a considerable amount of thought uh put into the out <clears throat> the, the exterior of the yeah. building so that it would match will rogers and it looked like it belonged yeah you know? and so anyway just they, a, they, they did a good off. job yes okay they did a good job but <laughs> yeah they, they took doc's pocket knife <laughs> they did. Oh man, I've, I've, I've actually twice I've tried to slip past the uh, metal detectors, uh-huh. and twice I've got caught. <laughs> I showed you how to do it. I know, right? Yeah, that's uh, they didn't off take, air. I they can teach you. Yeah, I can teach I know, you my right? ways. Okay. Yeah. Actually, okay. whenever we um, when Dickey's Arena was initially built, and we held the fir- very first show, in our meetings as we were getting into all of that, we said, "Hey." Just a word to the wise, if you don't want a security issue, you might want to allow pocket knives just for the Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo sure. only. Yeah, yeah, because that's like all of the people there. All of the people are going to walk up with a pocket knife. So they yep. allow up to a four-inch pocket knife only for the Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo. Uh, yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. They, they got one of mine. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so, so they also yeah. got a. Uh, you went in with a five incher, huh? Yeah, I tried <laughs> no, to. No, that's, all, that's <laughs> only. He did you went with a bayonet. <laughs> no, it was three, actually it was just a, a little three and a half. Yeah, yeah. yeah. three and a half. Yeah. Are we still talking about knives? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> had I know, it's like had I known then what I know now. Yes. It, it, they well, I told got you, my you got to take your wallet and your cell phone, put the knife in between, just hold it in your hand. 
Yeah, and just oh. like that's how I got through with them. Yeah, if you, if you wear a belt buckle, you can put it in behind your belt. Oh buckle yeah, too. yeah. yeah. Mm. Hey, I didn't say oh, that. Uh, I've, never, I've never done that. Where's the but. beep? Where's the beep button? Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Out. I like how your friends take your water and finish it, and then start spitting in it on them. Yeah. <laughs> here, here. There you no, go. That's probably I mean, got backwash yeah, in it. Whatever. Are, are you shocked at all? Freaking Copenhagen too. <laughs> But what speak, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, speaking of the stock show, so I brought yeah. in, mm. you know, true honor of the Dude, Whiskey Brothers awesome. podcast and y'all's. In, Hold in, that up to this camera right here. Inviting me on to the Whiskey Brothers podcast. I, uh, like I said, my wife kicked me off the whiskey, but I have this 125th uh, edition of the Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo TX whiskey bottle. Awesome. Firestone Robertson's a good partner of ours. Yeah. We present all of our rodeo champions with these bottles with this custom neck on it that has the year, you know. Year. That is pretty freaking Dude, that sweet. Is so awesome. Wanted to bring that for y'all so y'all could put it up on y'all's uh, wall of fame yeah, on your yeah, shelf. We'll, and we'll pass that thing around, Doc. Oh, yeah, yeah, I want to yeah, see yeah, that yeah. up close. We'll, we'll put it over here with our do not drink bottles. Yeah, yeah there you so go. So yeah, got, I like yeah. it. The so Rittenhouse, House like signed by Rittenhouse. Oh, oh really? Uh, yeah, yeah. And then the uh, Marker Sellers um, Legends uh, who bottle the showcase. Rittenhouse. Yeah. Yeah, he, he he was actually in Decatur. It's the really? dude, uh-huh. the yeah. dude, Kyle Rittenhouse. Yep, no kidding, he was yeah. in Decatur. Uh huh. What was he doing here? Just like a target practice. <laughs> yeah, tar- target <laughs> practice. He was needing. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, don't, I think he was just doing a just a tour tour thing. Yeah. And, That's too freaking cool, man. Yeah. And, uh, Will Carpenter actually uh, showed up with like five bottles and said, "Hey, I got these bottles. Would you be interested in signing them?" He's like, "Yeah." yeah. It came out and. Nice. And then we just so happened to have Will on that same week, yeah. so he, he brought it to us. Oh, that's really cool. <clears throat> this is cool. That's yeah, it quite is. an honor, man. Thank you. Heck yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Because you it's bet. like Fort Worth is home, even though we're, this like this is Decatur. This is home. Yep. But when you go yeah, out of town. Fort Worth. Yeah, we claim Fort Worth. When yeah, you go out yeah. of town, you're like, people are, where are you from? Uh, Fort Worth. Fort Worth. Yeah, yeah, Fort Worth. Yeah. So Fort Worth is home. And it's still Cowtown, man. Absolutely. It's, it, there is such a delineation between Fort Worth and Dallas. And oh so God. I love it so much because yeah. Fort Worth people are passionate about it. Yeah. Well, you know, the crazy thing about it is, is as big as uh, Fort Worth is, or as much as Fort Worth is known as Cowtown, there's still this, um, there's still this group that wants to come in and make it funky town, yeah. you know, make it about mm-hmm. the music and they want to change the, the concept mm-hmm. of Fort Worth to funky town from Cowtown. Mm-hmm. And yeah. frankly, Fort Worth, the attraction for Fort Worth, in my opinion, what brings everybody here is oh. that you know that western environment sure yeah, yeah there, there, can be, oh, there can be the funky town aspect i mean but yeah. it's yeah. not it's not taking exists. over yeah. you know it's like you think of like the five big cities in texas you got fort worth dallas houston mm-hmm. austin and san antonio yeah right you know it's like of those the, austin the, yeah yeah it's like austin is austin houston's houston yeah. and dallas is dallas yeah. like those are yeah they're, mm-hmm. they're just kind of stupid sorry, um, sorry guys that's <laughs> well, true. It's yeah, true. San Antonio is pretty cool, but yeah. it's kind of cool because of its like because it's so Hispanic heritage, yeah. right? Yeah, the Alamo and yeah, just, yeah. all of that. But yeah, North yeah. Side now, night and day different from when oh, we were there. Man. The, the, the amount of tourists that are in that place mm-hmm. on the daily. Oh, it's is mind blowing. Of course, the new developments, the Drover, has got to be a big responsibility in that. Yeah. But just walking, like you're walking through there, it's safe. There's there's security. There's cops. There's patrol everywhere. That's what yeah, a I totally mind. different place. It is a monumentally different place now. Yeah. 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 You you mentioned fighting earlier in the podcast to <laughs> me, and yep, so. Happened. We would uh, we'd go down there to Northside, which I'm sure that many of us, you know, uh, frequent, uh, yeah. many of the establishment uh, establishments some, down some there are but, still there. Some yeah, still absolutely. <laughs> and uh, so they're not the same though. Mm. Yeah, not quite the same. No, nope. not quite. But, but uh, yeah, a lot of fights down there. there. It used to be rough. I remember when the uh, Mexican gang members used to drag the strips mm-hmm. down there in their cars and be bumper to bumper and they'd be getting in fights and stabbing people and all that stuff and i'm like man it's it's the wild west the cop the you know the local police force cleaned all that up and rerouted the traffic Mm -hmm. and made them go elsewhere with it you can still see some pretty cool cars that's another aspect too the cars that come through there and make the loop are pretty cool to watch too absolutely but Um, yeah walking down through there you know down uh, what is that exchange or main yeah one Mm -hmm. of them um, it's just a whole different experience and just a whole different crowd, really. Yeah. All of the oh, hotels yeah. and people yeah. want to come in. It's safe, like you said, and clean. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's cool shops. And, I mean, it's it's just it's totally different. I hadn't been in years. And then in 2021, uh, after Mary and my wife, all of her family from Chicago comes down. And she's like, well, let's take them to the stockyards. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? We don't take people there. No, absolutely not. <laughs> so we, we go to the stockyards. And yeah. it is just, it, yeah. of course, it's a whole new place and yep. i was in, in awe of that but i was also in awe because this is right in the middle of covid 
and Fort Worth did not give a shit because it was shoulder to shoulder, no mask. Everybody was yeah. in the stockyard. Yeah. It was so crowded. Yeah, no, it's, uh, <clears throat> you know, I grew up getting on bulls down there and yeah. uh, down at the stockyard. So if we didn't have something going on, a college rodeo or whatever, uh, we'd go down there because they had a Friday and Saturday night rodeo and you mm-hmm. could go down there and make five or six hundred bucks, you know, mm-hmm. in eight seconds. And then you could go up to the bar and spend it all yeah. and, uh, <laughs> you know, all that stuff. And so we'd go down there and get on bulls and, Go up to the bar and have a good time and get in fights and just, you know, <laughs> live that whole lifestyle. You know, you could do it all right there, all, you know, all within half a mile. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Hell's Half Acre. Yeah. No, Hell, that's further south in town. Well, if you drive down through there, yeah, it was further down, but they do have a – have you seen the arch down there that says Hell's Half Acre right by right before you get to uh, the Cattleman's Steakhouse? Yes, yeah. On the uh, left-hand yeah, side? Yeah, yeah. I, that was always there where that building ran uh, along the creek or whatever. Yeah. 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 It's a distillery now, right? Isn't that uh, the Acre, distillery? Acre Acre. distillery. Yeah, yeah, there's a distillery there. Yeah. Uh, one more question about Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo. Because uh-huh. it's been on my mind ever since I was like five years old. Yep. What's the plan for the tower? Uh, Will Rogers Tower right there in front. The yeah. iconic yes. tower. The old Arc Deco Tower. That- Man, honestly, there's been this, uh, you know, a few years ago, they went back and redid the lighting, mm-hmm. you know, the, the up lights and all of that. And yeah. so now we have the ability to customize the lighting. So like on TCU day, we can make the tower purple mm-hmm. or, you know, whatever day we're doing, we can change the, the lighting. Yeah. And um, so that gives it a cool look because obviously that's a, it's a fixture. You know, you, you tell people how to get to our grounds and you go, hey, just come to the tower and yeah. hang a left and go down to the parking mm-hmm. garage or whatever. It's always, it's just a landmark, right? Um, but there's actually nothing in it. That's crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. They actually cleaned it a while back, but um, you know, there are there. It's just an empty tower. It's just an empty tower. Are there multiple floors, or is it just? It's just stairwells. That, a stairwell that goes all the way to the top, so that they can service the lights or whatever it. else is up there. But a lot of pi- uh, pigeons had gotten in there and lived, yeah. and you know, uh, hmm. we had some local. We've got some resident uh, red tail hawks that hang out during the show that eat the pigeons and. Hmm. So there's dead pigeons and Dang, pigeon, pigeon crap and everything. Really? So they, they went in there and cleaned it all out and yeah. So. I've always wondered what mysteries are above the when you walk in. Yeah, it's yeah. like why did they build that tower in the first place? Yeah, as a as a landmark. You know, back wow. in the day, there was all you know. Obviously, downtown Fort Worth and yeah. all that wasn't there. It was out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, right. So it's like Washington's monument. It's yeah. like why did they build that? Just, Just a hollow big old, structure. Like, yeah. Huh. yeah, yeah. But they uh, they had the centennial celebration, which was why they originally built the auditorium and uh the coliseum and all that right there back in 36 Mm -hmm. so dallas was having some big ag related fair world's fair or something what you know i can't remember what the name of it is and um or was but fort worth wanted to steal all that you know there's always been the rivalry oh sure Mm -hmm. yeah yeah, it's dallas yeah Gay so, ass MFers. Like, we're. Yeah. yeah. So they Wait, put We're going to well, do this there right. Were, there we're going to do this. Listeners. Yeah, yeah. canceled. So uh, you, can, you can look this up on uh, online, but they um, they had a billboard. Eamon Carter, one of the Fort Worth founding fathers, uh, put up a billboard across the street from where all that World's Fair took place and said, yeah. you know, do your business in Dallas, but come have fun in Fort Worth. It had a pinup girl, like, <laughs> sprawled out, you know? And they, I mean, it, they had these burlesque shows and yeah. Costa Manana. That's. Cost Manana was developed for that, and yeah. there's a whole history behind all that. Well, even Meacham yeah, Field was cool. like preceded DFW. It was like yeah. the hub you flew into. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know how love how long Love Field's been there, but yeah. Meacham was a big uh, destination airport back in the day too. Mm. It's like 199 going up through, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, up through um, Lake Worth, yeah. and was that Thunder Road? What do they call that? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and uh, that used to be where all the Thunder Road. Is it Thunder Road? I've yeah, never heard that Thunder term. Road. Yeah, is that a real name or is that yeah. a nickname? But that's yeah, yeah, it's a nickname. Okay. But uh, that's where all the when the cowboys and things rode into Fort Worth, they would yeah. come up one ninety nine back in the day, and there's all the brothels and the gambling <laughs> houses, and eventually at some point, you know, I don't even know what years, but it kind of became the armpit of Fort Worth. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's like kind of like Hell's Half Acre. Yeah, yeah, mm. Azel. Yeah, you know, it's like Absolutely. going up through. Springtown. Yeah. There's a lot of history, man. I, yeah. You know, there really is. Dude, that's that's what, interesting. What even turned me on to learning about Thunder Road was, uh, so I go down 199 coming home every day because it's just easier than going, you know, uh, 35 to Second 287. Or any yeah. Of that. Yeah. yeah. So um, <clears throat> I, I go down 199, and I was cruising down through there several days, you know, and I'd look and I'd see this sign that said Rocket. And it was like a mechanic shop, right? Mm-hmm. I'm like, what the hell? It looks, you know, it has this like, you know, this old – kind of old school look to it so uh-huh. i just googled rocket club on 199 or rocket sign yeah and it pulled up it used to be the rocket club back in the day whenever huh. thunder road was in action it's like 
So back when it was all clubs and gambling houses, that was actually a club. It's now a mechanic shop. But anyway, so that's what turned me on to learning about all that. Yeah, dude, that's cool. There's a whole like, mo- you know, like it was te- like the red light district. The for, red light district. Yeah. Fort Worth. Yeah. You wow. know a lot about Fort Worth for being a South Lake homo. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? That's, right. that's, right. that's, well, uh, that's where he would get his Mexicans to cook for him. Where he'd just go down. The oh yeah, you, you got to watch I mean, out for the cartel in South Lake. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's, that's true. no joke. Yeah, that's yeah. true yeah. joke. Yeah, South Lake Town Center or Town Square. Or whatever. I got a feeling they're everywhere, so we just we, yeah. we play they're, nice. If they're yeah. in South Lake, they're everywhere. Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that ain't no joke. <laughs> yeah, talk, yeah. One one of our earlier episodes. It's an inside joke, but basically, Doc was talking about his time on the beach when um, some Latino people were were cooking his fish for Cup him. Yeah. No, it's <laughs> a, that, his yeah. fish. You yeah, know, he right? married a Mexican lady, right? Yeah. No, it's, it's awesome. It's like <laughs> She's okay, fluent, man. So, so I learned about the Mexican skillet from like the beach, uh-huh. and and it's like you're down there fishing, and and it's like the Mexicans got it right. Okay, so so what what do they what do white people do? White people go fish and they take their fish home and they cook cook the fish at home. Right. Right? Mexican people don't do that. Mexican people take their cooking stuff to the beach, <laughs> they catch the fish and they cook it right there. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's the way to do yeah. it, right? So So Doc would... thought it would be a good idea for her to go hire him a couple <laughs> that would cook for him on the beach. I don't so even you... know if it was we've we've made this joke so much, I don't even remember what the real story <laughs> right. is anymore. Right. Basically we You're just not getting Doc... the real story I mean, anymore. We, we I turned him in such that. a racist. Does it matter really what the real story is? <laughs> Uh, oh, oh my yeah. gosh yeah. I don't know how we got on that story. like your wife's people yeah. figured it out yeah. take the cooking <laughs> stuff to the beach absolutely yeah no, they uh their their local fare and their ability to cook is just uh oh yeah, yeah. it's something else my mother-in-law just made uh homemade pozole mm. that we have some family up from uh from Mexico yeah. mission but um made homemade pozole for lunch the other day oh, green or man. red uh green I mean okay. red sorry okay red Yep, Primos no. does a green pozole that's really? pretty freaking good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah, good. she makes all kinds of homemade stuff. She sends food home with my wife all the time. She's like, "Here, I made this for Callaway, or give this to Callaway." I'm like, "Hey, this is why you do jujitsu you know? yeah, and run yeah, thirty miles. Right. Otherwise, exactly. you'd be eight hundred pounds." I learned that really quickly because uh, I got married to her, and then it was also and got a job sitting in an office. And um, I gained 15 pounds pretty quick, and I was like, "Okay, man, <laughs> something's got to give here." But you know, you go to you go like any Hispanic woman's house that cooks, yeah. and um, she'll feed you a plate of food, and you get done with that plate of food, and she'll go, you know, get his mask Callaway, <laughs> you know, want some more? Yeah. And I'm like, "No, it's okay. Are you sure? Yeah. No, nah, I'm good. I'm full. <laughs> I finally had to go. Hey, look. After a third time, <laughs> I, I, I can't do it anymore because yeah. I'm gaining weight. Okay, I, I'm, I got to go on a diet now. So anyway, uh, have, great has, people like. Yellowstone's coming back around. Has mm-hmm. any of Sheridan's work involved with the Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo, or brought people to yes to the to the table? So I think all of us in the Western industry have really been riding the Yellowstone wave as of recent. Yeah, um, you know, and it's been great. You know, there's a lot of you know naysayers out there about Yellowstone and that whole movement and all that sort of thing. Like you know, ah, yeah, yeah. Yellowstone's not real. To- for us in the Western industry, I have a real appreciation for it because it reinvigorated the interest. Yes, it did. And makes people mm. want to go out and buy cowboy hats and jeans and shirts and come and to go the to fort, rodeos. Go to rodeos yes. and livestock yeah. shows, buy land, buy horses, buy trucks. I mean, we're all benefiting from that, right? Economically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, so I have a real, you know, appreciation for what Taylor Sheridan's done. He's been um, involved in our show somewhat. So he mm. comes. Uh, so the four sixes ranch. We have a invitational ranch rodeo. Okay. And um, we bring all the big ranches, Wagner Ranch and Four Sixes. Mm-hmm. And uh, King Ranch is going to be there this year, which is going to be great. Uh, this will be their first year to be involved in the ranch rodeo. Mm-hmm. Uh, Four Sixes has won it the last two or three years, but um, obviously he owns the Four Sixes Ranch. Mm-hmm. So he comes up and, and uh, during the ranch rodeo and cheers the guys on. And uh, we had uh, one of the 1883 actors that rides on the grand entry every night. Yeah. And uh, he's. Uh, local Fort Worth guy and so they are, they are actually involved yeah. people yeah in, yeah. in, in that realm we, I know Forey is for sure we, I've got a bottle of uh, uh, the guy that plays Lloyd in Yellowstone uh-huh. we met him at the bottle signing when he was Sweet. with Oak and Eden uh, got oh, the nice, signed yeah. bottle from but he he lives life he comes from rodeo yeah you bet he walks bow legged and everything yeah now I think they did a good job of that in Yellowstone is they you know tried to bring in some of the 
the, the Texas music guys and people that were actually part of the industry, like Ryan Bingham. So. He can't act yeah. for shit. No, yeah. You come <laughs> up no, he can't. I love Bingham, but I love yeah. his music. He's an amazing God, his artist voice and songwriter. Is great. But yeah. yeah, yeah. So before Bingham became b- the Bingham that everybody knows, he rode bulls. Yeah. And uh, him and really? I called his rodeo together. I've got pictures of him behind the bug and shoots, you know, at. at uh, Damn, I, I didn't off. know that. Yeah, he rode bulls. Yeah. And uh, good dude. We used to run around. Matter of fact, and believe it or not, uh, we were at a. Uh, college rodeo in I believe it was in Portales, New Mexico. Yeah, and he was headed out, and I, we were going, "Hey, man, where are you going?" He's like, "Oh, I'm gonna go over here and cut my first CD." And so he went over to some studio and cut a CD, you know, yeah. and uh, came back and he had these blank CDs with his music on it, and he was giving them out. And I think I gave him five bucks or something. He's like, "Man, no, nah, it's free." You know, I said, "No, nah, I want to give you some money for your first CD." Yeah. And then uh, at our uh, college conference finals, he came over and sat at our hotel room and played "Road Goes On Forever" and those old songs yeah. and stuff, and drank beer with us and. <laughs> Man, it, <clears throat> Bingham was a good dude, and yeah. uh, I think he's um, Hollywood now. But, Has he? Uh, yeah. yeah. But a uh, good dude. Great uh, music. Wasn't he born and raised in southern New Mexico? I believe so, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Had a pretty rough up- upbringing, yeah. you know, parental. It's like the artist is, is yeah. still G- He's genuine. Yeah, his songs yeah. are genuine for yeah. sure. But, yeah, and acting, and he came acting out. abilities. Yeah. <laughs> and weird, yeah. weird circle back to our beginning of our story. He was also Phillip's walkout music. Oh, that's true. Yeah, what? he played. Um, oh my God, what Philip was Miller. That? Yeah. yeah. Oh no, really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. Mm, I'm gonna... Hey, hey, hooray, or something like yeah. that. What's the name? Of hey, that hey, song? hooray! I think that was the name <laughs> of the song. Yeah. Nice, dude. Holy cow! Hey. I mean, we're just bringing Damn. it all back around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He actually came up. He came down one time and uh, opened up for 1100 Springs. Y'all remember 1100 yeah. Springs? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. In Denton, at a small establishment over there, mm-hmm. and go and he called me yeah. and uh, went over there. It was like I don't know, four or five of us, and he set up there with his guitar, you know, and just yeah. you know, like. Just he opened up yeah. for them. What's that? Man, what happened to them? Like they I don't just know. like went away. Yeah, yeah. I went over there strictly for Bingham. We hung out and he played the guitar, and I went back. I came back to the house or whatever. But uh, yeah, cool story, man. Yeah, his. Uh, I have not been to one of his shows live, unfortunately. But I, I have bought like his Amazon Prime yeah. show mm-hmm. that they they filmed and did. He, the dude puts on a really freaking good show. I got kicked yeah. out. Of, I got kicked out of one of his live shows. Are you time. serious? <laughs> for fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you the story, okay? Since we're talking about it, but uh, I was waiting in line to use the restroom, and uh, obviously probably had some whiskey. And uh, <clears throat> there was a guy standing there, and he was telling me how bad he hated the music and he didn't like it. Uh. Obviously, Ryan, being a friend of mine, I, was, so I, said, <laughs> I told him I didn't appreciate that. And uh, in not so many words, right? But, uh, <laughs> sure. Yeah. Anyway, it was my turn to go into the restroom. So I went on to the restroom and used the restroom and walked back out. And I'm standing there talking to a friend of mine, and he come walking up to me, and he goes, uh, you still got a problem with me? I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah <that was> awesome. <laughs> so we went to fight, and, and, and I'll never forget, the bouncer comes over and grabs me, and he takes me. So, like, at the at the concert, they had a, uh, a space in between the stage and the front row. They had, like, a bike racks or whatever, keeping mm-hmm. people back from the stage. And he walked me down through the front of the stage, and Bingham was up there on the stage. I'm going, Bingham! I'm trying to get him to, like, <laughs> say something to him. <laughs> like, don't kick me out. He's like, I don't know that guy. I don't yeah. know him. My wife and I were dating, and she was so mad because we all got – kicked out so she had to come obviously she had to be the good girlfriend and come hang out with me right so (laughs) anyway (laughs) that's funny good times oh what's uh what what is laid out for your future what's uh what's what's next well you got the what when's the uh fort worth stock show and rodeo january 17th through february 8th okay in 2025 and so that's coming up that's coming in hot and uh we're in go mode you know livestock entries will be uh be coming in november 15th is Mm. the deadline Mm. so wow we still get all those paper entries in. Okay. We're not even on, we're not online yet, so oh. they all come in, you know, still paper form. Yeah. So over what thirty nine thousand head of livestock are entered via paper. Yeah. And Jeez. I go pick all. I pick up the mail still. I've done it for ten or twelve years now, and so there'll be tubs and tubs of mail I'm bringing back to the office and sorting through and to help and and uh, they're working junior livestock entries and open livestock entries and this is all PPNR. the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So it's four four happened. weeks out of the year of actual rodeo and yeah. then a full year's worth of preparing and yeah and organizing so this election is isn't even on your radar you to know it's like you, it's really not no yeah i yeah. mean uh, yeah aside from me just like personally you know keeping up with it yeah it's really the stupid 
<laughs> goddamn election. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's you not. Know, yeah. Have y'all listened? Speaking of podcasts, have y'all listened to uh, Trump's podcast with Joe Rogan? Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 I just got done with it. I have not it's listened pretty, to like the, surprisingly good. Yeah, it really is. Right. Yeah. It I really have is. not listened you know, to JD's the, uh, on there now too. Yeah, right? the Vance. Yeah. Have you have you vice? have you listened to that? No. I'll, honestly, it's like I didn't think I would think this. That guy is super right? sharp. I'll take JD Vance over. You know, it's like yeah. from a podcast. Yeah. From a humor standpoint, yeah. dude, that JD, it was good. It's, it's freaking good. That. Yeah. Yeah. You know who else he had on? Who? Fetterman. Oh, I, he had on John Fetterman. I started that one. I started it. I couldn't hang, right? Because like, just because Fetterman's still not 100%. No, it's like, well, first of all, I don't know who Fetterman is, right? <laughs> He's the. Obviously, some dude from Pennsylvania that had a stroke, right? Yeah. Other than that, I don't know who the guy is. But, uh,. Yeah, so so I thought okay, I'm gonna stop this. On? I'm gonna stop this podcast. I'm gonna go <laughs> research the guy. Yeah, and then come back to it. So you haven't come back to it, or you no, haven't, I haven't researched? Haven't, him haven't yet. researched him. Okay, okay. So so who the hell's Fetterman? Like uh, he's a Pennsylvania senator, right? Something or is he like a that. governor? He's a Democrat. Yeah, yeah. But now they're yeah, now yeah. they're because of his antics, they're calling him a, a Republican troll. <laughs> For the de- in the Democrat what? in the Democrat Party, <laughs> yeah. because, because he's because he's, he went he's, on Rogan. Yeah, he, well, he's done like an RFK and a Tulsi Gabbard. He's flipped. Like he's ah. like oh. seems apparent. Maybe he's working for the other side. That's what the conspiracy is. The one like, the one thing that I, I mean, there's obviously a lot of things in that podcast wow. that I like, but uh, <clears throat> Joe Rogan said something that uh, resonated with me that. If you're a Republican now, you're actually a rebel. You are the rebel. Yeah. You are yeah. the rebel. And I was like, man, I really like that. You yeah. Because I've always been on, yeah. you know. You're the anti corporate. Yeah. You're the anti big government, man. which we've, the conservative side always has been, yeah. but now you're anti corporate. You're you're the skeptic, right? Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. You're the one that's like, question everything. That's, I yeah. mean, that's cool. It's really, you know, I never <laughs> had thought about it like that, but, you know, it's yeah. true. I was actually sitting around talking to a flaming liberal, mm. right? And, See, and I still take offense to that because why? I'm I, I still identify as a classic liberal. No, 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 yeah. no. We're talking flaming, which is the old liberal. OG rebel. Yeah, I'm not talking yeah, you. Exactly. I'm talking yeah. flaming liberal. Yeah, okay. Right? Flaming leftist. Yeah, flaming yeah. leftist. We're trying to make and, liberal great again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We just lost another handful so, of listeners. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Thursday, Wednesday, some some time this week. I was sitting around talking to her. Yeah, and uh, and and she made a good point. She was like. Okay, uh, back in 2005, it's like we were anti-establishment. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, yeah. okay, that's valid, that's right? Yeah. So back in 2005 when I was like, oh, yeah, go Iraq war, George Bush, <laughs> neocon, you know, whatever, she was like down with those guys. Yeah, yeah. And, and had I known what I know now, mm-hmm. I probably would have sided with her then. Yeah. Right, so that's really interesting. Yeah, like just we, good, we had the episode point. about that. We call it the yeah. Great Crossroads. Right, there were there was this giant intersect of people that were m- migrating into that kind of thought process: mm-hmm. anti-establishment, anti-war, uh, and then the other side, instead of meeting in the middle, just kept going over to we love pharma, we love establishment, we we're okay with war. Yeah, it's a weird change what that happened. Fuck? Like what <laughs> what actually happened? I, d- we I had don't this great understand that change. To have like. So much common ground. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then it was just, nah, we just. I don't get it. Yeah. She couldn't She couldn't tell me what actually happened. But what happened to the Democratic Party? Yeah, so what, how does she feel I now? I mean, what happened to the effing Republicans either, Yeah, for that yeah. matter? Right. You know, both the parties are effed up. Yes, they are. So how is yeah. your flaming liberal feeling right now? Uh, she, Okay, so she she thinks she's not going to vote. She's not going to vote, period. Yeah. Well, then she can't complain yeah. ever. I, I didn't and, tell for, her that. Four years, at least. Yeah, so, so it's is more, <laughs> is more of a therapeutic conversation for the both of us. But but honestly, it's like I didn't judge her for that. I mean, it's like things are intense right now. What was her I, uh, reasoning behind not wanting to vote? It's too, it's too effed up. It's yeah. like she, she doesn't know where she is mm-hmm. as far as how effed up everything is she, she doesn't she doesn't even trust her opinion yeah because it's so effed up she has a great like, moral I get it conundrum with both candidates i guess yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And i was like man i totally understand yeah although i don't understand <laughs> but but i understand the like where she's coming from yeah it seems like this election like leans heavily on moral 
groundwork, which is so weird to it's associate so weird, yeah. Donald Trump yeah. with any moral <laughs> moral standing. <laughs> but he, that's that's true. But yeah. he's an older guy now, I guess, and, and you know, probably getting shot. Might change a person's outlook and hum- humble bit. them a little bit. You, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you can say all you want. It's like whether it's true or not true. Uh, what it did change is how a lot of people view him. Yes. Oh, yeah. Like, and wh- how is that? Why the, is that? The three hours on Rogan, I think, was pretty uh, humanizing for him. Yes, it yeah. was. And that's kind of where – that was my position on it after the podcast had ended was that, you know, you get to see this kind of political um, figure, right? You mm-hmm. know, Donald Trump, and he's this actor and – you got a TV show and all that sort of thing, but you really never get beyond that, right? Right. And that podcast was really good for that for a lot of people. For that three hours, you get to see Donald Trump not only as politician, you know, past president, mm-hmm. TV Bingo. actor, all that. You get the, a little more. The from, human you know, aspect. Yeah, the human yeah. aspect of it. So get a little mm-hmm. more human element. I was pretty surprised yeah. to find myself relating to him yeah. more than once. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yep. To be honest with you, when he ran the first time, I was like, oh, no, this is not good. Not good for the Republican Party. No, yep. I, okay. I didn't vote for him the so, first time. Yeah. Hell no. Yep. No way. So so in any way, shape, or form, do y'all wish Komama would have <laughs> actually done an episode with Joe Rogan? Yes. Yes. I would pay money because to see that. I, honestly, I wish I, I, I would have listened to it. Do you oh, think you can listen to the whole episode? I don't know. Oh, I, I don't know. Was, was, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't. I would like the chance to <laughs> yeah. see. Yeah. Yeah. The freaking cackling yeah. would kill me, but I would pay money to see that. Yeah. Hell, I would watch it, it just happen. for It'll never enrichment. Happen. It'll never happen you know? because no. I, I don't no. think she can get herself through it and not screw up and say something that's no. going to mm-hmm. impossible. Me- they're not going to let her. You know, no. they want it to be It's not going to happen canned. For, before Tuesday. Well, you, you see what happens when she is on her own. Yes. I mean, have you seen her just talk oh. without the yeah. teleprompter? Yeah. It's it's terrible. Mm. But it's always like I've never actually gone on and and just sought out like an interview with Komama. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Komama. Yeah. But you would Komama. if it was Rogan. Yeah, I would if it was yeah. Rogan. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. But e- everything I've seen about Komama, uh, it's it's been colored. It's like, hey, look at this funny video. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, so, and it's so, like, very, so I watch it. Distracting. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's it's already colored. But the reason me. why I'd want to see Rogan, only Rogan, is because he did the same thing to Trump. Yeah, like, cause, and that's my biggest pet peeve with politicians. That's why I hate them all. Is because I can't just answer the freaking simple question. Yeah, like yeah. I could, I could ask you, what color is that mic in front of your face right now? Be yeah. like, it's, 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 it's you, you're going to tell me it's big but, and black. But this whiskey is great. This big, well, no, big so, black mic is affecting uh-huh. how I drink my whiskey. And yeah, yeah. 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 But they're going to tell me he calls it the weave. The weave. Yeah, he, he's, a yeah. Weaver. Mm-hmm. he's a weaver. That's yeah. good. I've never yeah. even thought. But you to know, think I that. never realized that. I thought he was just speaking off the cuff. But it's actually he's actually very strategic in the way that he talks and in his rhetoric. Uh-huh. And so when he mentioned that about the weave, that it's purposeful, I went, ah, oh, yep. wow. you know There's what a to it. yeah, yeah, that, I mean, that's mm-hmm. pretty smart. Yeah, and and the way I see it, you got you got one side that's willing to sit down and have long conversations. Yes, obviously, yeah. and the other. Uns- not. Unscripted. Un- yeah, the, unscripted. the other side's got to have a script. Biggest. Yeah, yeah that's the biggest thing. Unscripted. That's wild. Well, he mentioned that in that podcast, you know, that uh, they are very scripted on that side of the ticket. Yep. And, um, you know, he makes an, an effort uh, to just speak off the cuff at uh-huh. those rallies and things. And that's kind of why he obviously gets off topic and says oh, yeah. things off, you know, that don't benefit <laughs> him. <laughs> we but, we uh, all tend to squirrel. Yeah, that's, squirrel. that's human. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, that's, so, that's, I don't, that's why I don't understand the whole – obviously, scripting, some scripting is probably good. Yeah. Yeah, but to be that reliable on it to where like if your telecropper goes down, you have no idea what. To I happen. don't know, bro. Your uh, scripting did not work out yeah. too well at my wedding. I thought it worked out great. What are you talking about? <laughs> what do you mean? It worked out wonderful. That's fixed. Say, yeah. Oh man. Besides you and Sarah, Sarah I, mean, I, I got, was the ball of the the. Yeah. What do you call that? The talking about the whole. I got a picture of somebody giving somebody else a lap yeah. dance. Yeah. So you know, I thought it worked out. Fabulous. I won't say who that was, but it was you two. <laughs> yeah. This is a this is a perfect opportunity, though. Before we get too far into lap dancing on whoever's lap. Yeah. Let's well, conspiracy crossroads. We hadn't had this in a while. I don't. Oh. The music's gone. The little music that I queued up. I don't know where it's it's gone. That means Chance deleted it. <laughs> Probably. That's what that means. Clearing yeah. up, clearing yep. up the old history file and went one too far. Yeah, I got you. Cleaning yeah. up that picture folder. Uh, <laughs> That's yeah. what it was. Oh, shoot. I got to delete those. <laughs> uh, uh, conspiracy crossroads. Conspiracy crossroads. Yeah, this has kind of been a running theme. Uh, yeah. He, Mr. TikTok over here. Uh-huh. Uh, he yeah. brings a lot of fun conspiracy stuff from that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so con- tonight's oh, conspiracy crossroads. He might. 
you may. What's it say up there, big boy? What's you? Who's who? You talking to? You. Cal, Doc, or no, me? You're talking. What's it say up there? Uh was <laughs> I can't even say your name without laughing. <laughs> was Kamama the president? What? All along, or what? What do you? What Has do you, she ever been the president? You mean for the last four years? No. In, no. At, at any point in time? No. No. What do you think? But. I, I don't think that Biden is capable of being a president, and so he had her in the background helping run, you know, yeah. run the line. I don't think she did that. Well, okay. Maybe she yeah, did. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, she yeah. Did. Maybe she's so, not smart like, enough to do Kamama, it. Kamama, <laughs> and this was not put out anywhere. None of you have seen it, obviously, but Kamama no. was... So not Whiskey Bro fact-checked yet. It not is 100%. Yet. Oh, it she is? She has okay. been the setting, the first black Indian... Female. Whatever she identifies as... Today she is. I think it's female. She is for eighty-five female. minutes. Yeah, she was setting president. When? When? What? While Uncle Joe, you'll appreciate this, mm. was getting a colonoscopy. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, they had to sign it over, huh? Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. For eighty-five minutes, wow. he might not Harris wake up. Became is that the, the first woman with presidential power. Uh, so what so is the she reason? She had the he red was button. because he was high on propofol. Yeah, and he was uh, out. Yeah. Yeah. I think he still might be like yeah. just stuck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think he. I think so among other things. eighty-five did you, minutes. Did you see him was. randomly just mm. walk up in the press conference the other day and talk about white men and the, the, the natives and? <laughs> What is he talking about? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't see this. I don't. But I don't even I know. Imagine. I don't even know what's real anymore. <laughs> I don't either. Yeah, that's with, the problem. With AI and everything. I'm yeah. like, I don't know if they're making that. I mean, they got commercials I with mean, Joe Rogan talking about you know whatever. Oh yeah. yeah. They put AI over it, and I'm you like, can't oh. tell the difference. Which it's is insane. You know, it's like I tell myself that, and then I have no problem like siding with my flaming liberals. Right. It's yeah. like the people around me that are like flaming liberals. I'm like, okay, you're just as clueless about things as yes. i am you know and it's like we're all just fucking clueless yeah. yeah but but we're not driving down the car in our car driving down the street with masks on <laughs> exactly yeah that's, that's true the difference. That's, that's true, true. we with, might with not mask have a, over our ac vents yes uh, yeah we yeah. might and putting uh, diapers on our cows well yeah that's, that's, you hadn't heard about that huh true. Well, I, yeah nothing surprising you're not no. getting any diapers on your cows <laughs> yeah i know like, like poor stock, stock show? show hadn't seen that yet there oh, was some man. environmental study that came out about um putting cows or diapers on cows yeah, will help to uh, reduce uh, filtering emissions. emissions help cut methane yep. emissions methane gas <laughs> yeah. we, we actually i think we actually have a ai photo <laughs> of a cows with diapers, cows with diapers <laughs> on them. we have we had had it made yes we did our uh, no it's not ai that's our in-house graphics. oh yeah i forgot in-house graphics department troy Thank you very much troy yes. did mm. that I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> troy i forgot his name yeah I mean, fired so. him he sucked we got rid of him <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. but, but speaking of Rogan, yep. if we ever do get invited to Rogan, you're going to have to officially go with us as our bodyguard because I'm slapping him. <sighs> that's the like we had the conversation like if ever you know mm. you get invited on Rogan, yeah. what do you, you thought the snake bite was bad? What do you bring the guy? Like, yeah, like, you know, like oh man, like you, this you is, brought us an awesome bottle of whiskey. Yeah, yeah. what would I think we like? take him a good guitar. Dude's got more yeah. of everything that you can ever think yeah. of. No, you can't do nothing. So I'm going to just slap no. him. So we're hypothesizing on what we do, and he straight up comes out with. I'm going to slap him. <laughs> you just walk up and slap the guy. You know, he's a uh, black belt in jiu-jitsu. Oh, I know. I'm getting, no, I'm not. Yeah. I know not what's going to happen. Not I know only what's in the happen. gi, he's also a no-gi black belt under Eddie Bravo. He's yeah, oh, also yeah. a and very proficient in taekwondo and has a spinning back kick that will knock your head off. Dude, so, yeah, have hey, you seen that you video s- where he's kicking yes, the, the, bag. The, the meter? No, the oh, meter oh, square. Oh, yeah. No, oh, I haven't seen that. Oh, geez. I, I, I don't even know how anybody... <laughs> Could stand up to that. He Dude, was teaching. He was teaching professional. Uh, so I, I can't remember who it was, but uh, they went to him to learn how to do this specific kick that it, he's really yeah. proficient at. Mm-hmm. So if that tells you anything, yeah, like yeah. a UFC fighter, I don't oh, yeah. think you're no, going to so slap the dude. I think I it'll think just be you and I. I well, on if the podcast, we get yes. on, no. If we get on there, I don't. I like, be will careful, slap him. Be careful what you <laughs> promise. No, I mean. Joe like, Rogan, if you're listening, bro. I don't think I would let you slap I'm not the saying, dude. Yes, you will. I'm not saying I'm going to not die. As your yeah. friend, I would but, not let you but let me, slap let the me dude. But let me throw this I'm at you. As the a, dude who took you to the bathroom and stood in there <laughs> yes, while you no. shit yourself. I mean, right? the worst thing he's going to do is knock me out. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't let you do that. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, it like, it not, could be like gonna, permanent brain well, damage. It could, but we would, be, we would go down in history. 
Dude, we would. Everyone would know us. So you and I better brush up on our notes and know what we're going to talk about yeah. during the podcast. He's not going to be present. Right. One, I'm taking one for the team. He's bro. not going to be present. So you know the reason that his table is as wide as wide as Mike it is, Tyson. Is Mike Tyson. Yeah. Uh, what? The very yeah. first time he had Mike Tyson on, he was really really cool. When he came back the second time, he was getting ready for a fight. fight. Yeah. In that first podcast, Mike said, "Hey, I don't fight because when I get into fight mode, I turn into somebody else. Yeah, yeah, my mind, a monster. Yeah, a yeah. monster." And so when he came back the second time, he was preparing for his fight with uh, Roy Jones, yeah. I believe. Yeah. And uh, he said it was he had to widen his table because Mike was in that fight mode, and Ooh. it was just he, it was like he, he was just, a totally different dude. Like he, he could really reach across the table, yeah. and yeah, yeah he's real wow. aggressive and real kind of combative. You know, for certain questions, Joe was laughing. He goes, "Man, it's not funny." Yeah. You know, or something one time, and I'm like, "Oh, God. and that's not yeah, a man." I don't think I'd he's joking. Off yeah, you. you don't want him jerking you across the table. You know? No, mm-hmm. no, do not get in that man's Mike, grasp for yeah. sure. So anyway, so yeah, I'm gonna purposely like place a targeted ad over Austin for this episode. Mm-hmm. Okay, <laughs> I don't know where Dude. his house is, uh, yeah. but it's got to be within a 50 mile radius of Austin. So oh, it's got to yeah. be. It's oh, somewhere. Yeah. I want to say there's water. I think he's he's I've on seen, the lake. Yeah, he's on the lake somewhere. Yeah, Lake Travis. Okay. Yeah, Lake Travis, so. that's the only be. lake I know. No, I've seen a drone footage of it. Oh, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. There is there is water in his back. We put in the headline, local podcast host says he'll slap Joe Rogan. That's right. <laughs> well, he's got that, uh, what is it, comedy mothership down there too, that yeah. comedy club Dude, he opened. Oh, yeah. Down there so bad. I mean, it yeah. was so great. Everybody's moving from, you know, California yep. and to Texas, and he's trying to bring. Dude, we got to go. Yeah. Just got to go. It'd be yep. awesome down there. It's like a weekend trip. It's yeah, jujitsu mecca down there. There's B team jujitsu, and all the big uh, jujitsu guys live down there in yeah. Austin. And, and you so, can just walk in the door because yeah. that's jujitsu. Yeah, you can pay a drop in fee down there, I think, for them. Like, yeah. not, every, not every school requires a drop in fee, but some And do. then roll with, like, Lex. Yeah, whoever. Dude, that's Craig crazy. Jones. Yeah. yeah. Who? So, who? Gordon Lex Ryan. Friedman. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. That dude's crazy smart isn't he yeah he yeah. is yeah mm. it's like yeah we won't get off on lex but but he's crazy smart apparently he's pretty good black belt. yeah black belt. Mm. another black mm. belt yeah jocko willing there's another mm-hmm. one there's yeah yeah lots i've of. heard him talk about jocko extensively was he ex-military too uh yes yeah navy okay. seal, navy yeah. seal. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. yep yep okay so speaking of other uh <clears throat> you go down a rabbit hole on that got you yes mm. yeah See, so Oh, wait. Sorry. I didn't mean to stop. He does this. Yeah. It's okay. Does, I do. If you, if you go back so, and listen through every it's the, episode. It's truly. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's truly <laughs> interrupt us. Getting, he's getting a little right. loose. Getting a little loose. I was just going to say, speaking of jujitsu practitioners and well-known figures that are doing jujitsu, uh, Tom Brady's ex-wife is a jujitsu purple belt. Oh, what? Pregnant by um, Valente Brothers' owner. So she's marrying a jujitsu practitioner. So. Don't mm, take your girl mm-hmm. to the pitching because you may not take her home. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow! So, do you, is there uh, is there um, co-ed jujitsu? Yeah. So, I mean, we like Tina. You know, she's oh, yeah, okay, jujitsu yeah, girl. Yeah. And, Have you uh, ever rolled with her? No, no. I, I, so, 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 do you roll with with female female judo practitioners? You know, I I try to I try to uh, roll with you know other purple belts and brown belts. Yeah. Uh, okay. And. You know whoever else is in the gym, and you know the girls kind of do their deal, and the guys kind of do their deal. Every now and then, it you know it kind of inevitable. You're, I'm curious uh, wait, about wait, that. Wait, like wait, if wait, your wait, wife wait. walks in and your head's like in between some other chick's legs, and it's like we're just <laughs> just fighting. So just are, fighting. So Cal, this is a hard question. So mm. it, is what you are telling us, and I need you to look into the camera when you answer. Yes. That. <laughs> I'm looking into the camera. The closest thing you've come to rolling with a female, Ty Rambo. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I was Whoa. I was gonna lead in. That, yeah, I'm glad you said that because it's exactly what I was gonna say. I was gonna like, well, that know. was so good. I'm a little uh, dizzy. I love it. Yeah. I, honestly, got, yeah, we had to get that in there about Ty. Poor I, Ty can't, man. I can't wait till he listens to this. Ty's oh. tough. He's tough. Yeah, he's a strong dude. He's gonna start his own podcast and just diss Bash. us the whole yeah. time. The whole time. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's like, but you could roll with a female. Yeah, if you yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah, but, people but it's do. not like okay. Just Dark like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Just like, yep. it's, it's within boxing, you can sign, have he'll be you can have up dudes tomorrow. who are yeah. females yeah. that compete as females. It's the same thing as jujitsu, right? Uh, technically, yes. Wow. So, and really, <clears throat> in the gym, it's not thought of like <clears throat> that. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. weird, right? Okay. You know, because we all roll with each. You know, me and Ty roll with each other, and it's normal, right? right. You know, we're choking each other, yeah, arm barring each other. You know. Yeah, sweating, you know, like, but I mean, it's it's a physical thing, and like, it's oh sure, violent, you know, yeah, for lack of better terminology, but 
at the same time, it's kind of bro deal too. You know, yeah. like you get done, you shake hands, you slap bump, and that's what mm-hmm. it's like. Heath and I are better friends for me having sat in the bathroom. Yeah, like, same like, deal, dude. You're yeah. shitting your brain out. It's you know? a, yeah. When you roll with somebody and you choke somebody and they choke you and they they smash you and you smash them, not like yeah. that, but you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Like it's kind of <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. We, we, yeah. Anyway, yeah. it's uh yeah. You have a different level of respect for someone. But, you see them in public. It's kind of interesting because you know like. Like, you've had their sweat in your mouth. <laughs> well, that does back to the question then. Have you ever left a match with any animosity or a grudge against somebody or vice versa? I think, you know, at yeah, absolutely. You know, there's yeah. times that you get mad. But for the most part, now that I'm deep into it, mm-hmm. you know, this was that was kind of early on in my white belt stages when I was beginning. And, yeah. uh, you know, still kind of – they call it white belt spaz. You know, you spaz as a white belt because you're doing adrenaline dumps when you go in there. You're still okay. real nervous about doing it. And, yeah. And uh, you're worried about getting choked, and you just don't know. It's you, there's a lot to anticipate. Yeah. And uh, so I did some of that early on, but okay. um, you know now that I'm a you know I've done it for four years, I've gotten used to that. I've learned how to manage those emotions, and it's a little bit old hat. Depending on who I'm rolling with now, if a black belt or brown belt comes in, it's a little different. But you know, someone purple belt or below, you got a different perspective. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It's like it's like anything else yeah. difficult that you do. You do it enough that uh, you, some of that anxiety and stuff kind of fades. You okay. Know? So what okay. is the highest belt that you've rolled with? Uh, black belt. Just, you know. Regular, just one? Yeah. First. So our instructor, or the guy that used to own our gym, he's a uh, first-degree black belt. And then I'm trying to think if it's gone deeper than that. Maybe, yeah, I think somewhere in that range. So can, can you really tell a huge difference between, like, say, where your level is compared to this guy? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It okay. gets down to the detail and the level of pressure and uh. the space that they – you know everything is just a little, little bit tighter the submissions are tighter uh-huh. the details are more refined uh when you're rolling with white belts you know first day guys or whatever it's just like all loosey-goosey flopping yeah, around it's just yeah it's rough mm-hmm. you know and um you get the black belt things just start to kind of get more refined and right. you become and they say that about purple belt they said purple belts are actually black belts that just haven't learned all the details yet well okay. <sighs> and so um which i don't know i'm not anywhere close <clears throat> to being a black belt i don't even claim to be but um so hmm. i still have probably i'm you know i've been rolling for four years and probably another six to eight years before i even think so about what, what, what does it wow, take that to long move up? what does it from take, now what does it take to move up um you know just your instructors the the guys that are you know monitoring you and rolling with you and all that sort of thing um you know they have to kind of just there's a feel for it and so they tell you when yeah, they level you up. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so yeah, you get so there's not really a set time. It's just when they feel you're ready. Correct. To, yeah, know. yeah. The average time span on a black belt is ten to twelve years. Wow. wow. Yeah, and I'm at year four. Four. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. So yeah, so, so it's, th- it's literally a, a a PhD of uh, you're mastering that craft. Yeah, if you think about it, you know, like, and I've said this before, but um, it's it's no different than um, owning a small business or something yeah. or uh, working in a profession. 10 years is about the yeah. time frame. You get to 10 years, you're pretty comfortable. You have a pretty good understanding of all the ins and outs of the business. Mm-hmm. You're profitable. Mm-hmm. You have some margin. You know, the, you're a little bit more comfortable, and that's really anything you do, jiu-jitsu. Sure, yeah. Fort Worth Stocks and Rodeo. You know, about year 10, I was like, I was starting to really kind of grasp it's like starting my role. Starting to see and, the grand themes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've got a side business, you know, about year 10 or 11. You, you kind of hit that crossroad at 10 or 11, too, where you go, man, I'm going to keep doing this. Am I burnt out? Or what's, where am I at with it? You know, yeah. like, and you go, either go, yeah, I'm going to keep doing it or, or I'm going to transition and go to something else. And let, so, let me throw this at you with that whole 10 years about the time it takes to get professional at it. Yeah. How do you feel about the leader of the free world only getting a max of eight Ooh. years on that? I mean, true story, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're it's just like, getting settled, right? At yeah. Yeah. It's like so why the they... leader of this country, and and Joe Rogan and JD Vance talked about this too. Mm. But like the leader of this country sits down with Putin, who's been there for like yeah. twenty five years, yeah. and right. and what whatever his name, Jinping, yeah, yeah, North yep. Korea, Jing, yeah. no, no, China, China, that yeah. guy's been yeah. there for like ever, and has a sit down with those dudes who have been doing this like. A large part of their life yeah he's on his three and a half year yeah so are you advocating for longer presidential term limits so no. was that what's going on i don't on know here? i don't, I don't know, know enough to, to recommend or not recommend well let me ask you this <laughs> why why do we have the leader which most would consider the president of the united states the most important job in the in the world yeah yeah and he can only be there for a max of eight but 
Congress can be there for a lifetime. Five. Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, there's. So why me, is Congress one of the, I mean, I, I think that's one of the only things that doesn't have term limits, right? Yeah. They yeah. should have but term so limits. Absolutely. In my opinion. Yeah. Supposedly. Mine too. Money? Supposedly we need term limits. Yes. Yeah. But. I think we need term limits on all, everything. Because yeah. they get in, they get entrenched, they change voting boundaries, and uh, what do they call that? Um, and that's not saying never was there an old senator that was pure, right? Was there? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you, couldn't, you can't name uh, them if they well, were. Let me, let me throw this out. I don't know. You. So let's just say we have a dude or a lady. Not not a they. Them, a person. But they no, a person. A dude yeah. or a lady, because that's yeah, all person. there is. Yep. I don't understand the pronouns, do I? I don't either, bro. <laughs> we don't want to go down that hole. We'll be here for we another don't six that. hours. That. And that. we'll get on. canceled. Yeah. We don't yeah. need yeah. to put those in front of your name uh, for the podcast title. <laughs> no. I don't even understand. I don't know White. what that means. <laughs> Him. No, so <laughs> let's just say that he or she is president for seven and three quarter years. So it's coming up time. He's, he or she will not no longer. Mm. And they are the greatest president we've ever had. Ever. But then you got a Kamama yeah. that is coming up in her spot. You tell me you wouldn't vote for, well, let's give this one another four years. Well, that's part of the, the that's I guess weird. The, the magic of this country, though, right? Like yeah. you, you would hope <clears throat> since that person is, is out of office, is no longer that, that somebody on the side, the side that you're voting for is a damn good candidate. Yeah. Like that's the hope. It's not just mm. the opposing side. It's also the, the, uh, the your side should be. Introducing a fresh new candidate. That, then, it, yeah, but by the end of two terms, yeah. but have you it's seen like you're our kind of ready for that dude to go? Ten years or or check. Hmm? Have yeah. you seen our candidates in the past ten years? We've had some great candidates, but they don't end up in the primaries. Or that's, sorry, that's the, uh, the the that's what I mean. I'm just talking about the the people that actually make it into there. Yeah. What, what was y'all's opinion on Beto? Uh, pretty poor. Yeah. A pretty poor opinion. Like very poor. I mean, what is this? I like on him, Beto. But, Beto. Yeah, I liked Beto. him. I liked him, but he came and he took all my guns. <laughs> <laughs> he, he came and took every one of them. What was your opinion? Did you like him? Uh, frankly, I it, I couldn't get past his just uh, incessant rambling. Yeah, I, I couldn't, just couldn't either. I couldn't get past his just talking all Not the time. At all. Like, dude, stop talking. Yeah, that's that. That's where I was at. Honestly, I yeah. mean, he probably is a great guy, maybe a great candidate. I don't know, but I just couldn't he was get past not. it. He was. Not. It became obvious to me during that whole episode that. You had some really powerful, rich dudes that were just getting a guy in there and was like, Young. Yeah, yeah. young. And, and, and it's like, you're going to do what we want you to do. Well spoken. Yeah. 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 It's like, we're going to pick this guy. And, and that yeah. really like became obvious in politics that Absolutely. that's that's the game that's being played yeah yeah i was gonna say that's yeah. every one of them though he did at least show up to decatur yeah. to campaign i saw him walking down the road he yeah. did yeah. He, he came did. to the conference center yeah and mm-hmm. he went to eagle station yeah he sure did. It's true. Yeah. I forgot about all that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's yeah. a great place, though. Eagle yeah, it is. Station. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I go there all the time. My wife is a regular customer there. So Eagle Station's the old uh, station right there. Um, Across from Primos. No. 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 It's no. right. It's right down from the old First National Bank. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, where I so used to get my haircuts. My yeah. da- my dad and my grandmother and my aunts used to own that building and sold that to him. Ah, and so anyway, okay, yeah. So y'all used to own the old uh, sal- or gas station. Mm-hmm. Oh, me. Yeah. Right. So that they owned it when uh, Homeboy was in there with the barbershop. I can't remember his name. Uh, yes. Old military guy. I believe so. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. That's, that's where I got. So I got a patient. Haircuts. I got a patient who last year he. Or maybe they sold it. Came to in. He checked his yeah, labs. He's know. he's about our our age, right? So he's our demographic. Checked his labs. Triglycerides were through the roof, and mm. and so I I brought him in. And I was like, dude, your triglycerides are jacked. English triglycerides. Yes. The the I was, okay, th- I was thinking the, the same thing. <laughs> yeah, the shit in your blood work that tells how much shit you eat. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, it's like it's like how crappy your food is. Yeah. Mm. It's gonna affect your triglycerides. I'm like, do you gotta do something? It's like you're so unhealthy. Mm-hmm. And 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 so we start going through his day and he works around Decatur and, and they go out to eat somewhere uh-huh. in around here every single day. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, that's what it is. You got to pick a place in Decatur. You have to go there. You have to talk to the cook staff. And then you have to eat the same thing every day. You have to pick that place. He picked Eagle Station, mm. right? And and then within three months, triglycerides were 
So what did point. he eat there every single day? He he has them make a bowl. Uh-huh. Oh, you know, yeah. it's like yeah. and it, and it's like meat, veggies yeah. and and just like with some sauce and it's yeah, like they, everything. They basically have like a chipotle there now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Or you, oh, it's shit. all fresh and you tell them I want chicken, I want rice, I want blah blah blah. blah. Yeah, so you're Monday saying, through Friday he shows up. He eats the same thing. You're saying from bur- Eagle Station for for lunch, I'm guessing. For lunch. For lunch, yeah. yeah. And it totally controls. So you're saying burrito tacos once a day, every day of the week is probably not the healthy option. I don't know. I think so. It's like your labs will tell. There's not not anything in a burrito taco that's bad for you. The taco. The 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 tortilla. Part of that. Nah. Probably not. Not if you're not sitting on your ass all day long. It's not. It's not seed. It's not. It's not seed oils. Well, you don't know. I don't know what they're putting it on the griddle with. I don't know if they're using lard or not, but dude. Freaking Eagle Station, you go there for morning times, and you can get this uh, toast, and they put peanut butter, oh, bananas, man. and then they drizzle honey on top yeah, of that. Yeah, that's not healthy. Oh, <laughs> that's that, not healthy. Isn't that the Elvis? I don't have a clue what it is. <laughs> that's, that's what Elvis? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, no, it's freaking good. Hey, for that years, I've eaten a peanut butter yeah. and banana yeah. sandwich for, for breakfast. Yeah. 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 What kind <laughs> of uh, years? Uh, whatever my wife buys, some kind of gourmet. So yeah. not... not yeah. Wonder Wonder Bread White. I probably have eaten it on Wonder that's Bread. But she bought some kind of I don't I don't know what it is, but it's so good. And she switched it up on me recently and bought this wheat bread. Yeah, Ugh. she's like it's healthy. You got to You got to be healthy. You know, you've got to eat this healthy bread because that other stuff's terrible for you. I said no. Bring uh-huh. the other stuff back. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll go to jujitsu <laughs> more or go I'll work burn out. This more, off. Okay, yeah. I'm running fifty miles, I can eat yeah, the yes. better bread. Bring the other bread back. Uh, it's a good place yeah. to wrap it up. It's been yeah. a couple hours. What? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Dang, yeah. dang, it really has. Yeah, that, about that's them? hardcore, man. How about them apples, man? Okay, yeah. Yeah. man, I'm glad you came on. Okay, so yeah. do you have any advice for for three fat fucks <laughs> like us? You know, as far as jujitsu goes, like, do we just show up and throw our weight around? Yeah, just come in, and throw your weight around, or maybe we'll maybe we'll throw your weight around for you. Mm, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> challenge. <laughs> no, it's, um, it's like Chance and I have no ego yeah. to get over. Sweet Heath. <laughs> nice. Yeah, couple, he like, needs a good couple ass kickings. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. He's uh yeah, he'd be a handful, no doubt. No. What do you weigh, Heath? Two sixty. Two sixty. About the biggest I guy I rolled with was two eighty. No, three hundred. Okay. And uh there's a guy that's two eighty that was a sheriff's deputy here in Wise County. Uh he was a handful too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so are there weight classes then? Yes. Okay. Yeah, no, it's yeah, it's broken out. I so would there told. be people for us to roll with? Yeah. Oh, are yeah. There, there are bigger dudes in there. Well, I mean, you don't need I'd bigger be, dudes. Ty Rambo throw your ass around. Oh, no, no doubt, yeah. no doubt. I'm not oh, saying oh, Ty Rambo. Oh, now we're complimenting Ty. No, there's this, would. there's this uh, point in your white belt where you know <clears throat> you're learning the technique. You have the yeah. strength and the size, but you don't have the technique. And the technique, a lot, you know, coupled with strength and all that, um, it it does assist you. You know, and so sometimes, uh, you know, when you come in, you're a white belt and you're trying to be real strong. It actually kind of works against you mm. against guys yeah. that train. You know, and so I'm not saying that y'all won't come in and you know submit a guy, a guy that's been training because it happens yeah but probably uh, not good probably not. could happen <laughs> you never know I'm I'm just gonna, gonna, if i came in i would just be trying to breathe that's, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. that's the biggest part of it about the cardio. a year of uh yeah. this dad bod workout that jen rob has been doing with us before i try anything mm-hmm. jujitsu yeah so talk to tina about it she's yeah she's oh yeah very well versed have you she seen is, yeah. the thing where and i don't know if this is for show or what but they take their belts and the dude like lifts his hand up with his belt and they whip him, him. Yeah. What, what is that? Is that just for some, some schools do that? So like um, when I got my blue belt, when Ty got his bl- uh, blue belt, you do thirty consecutive one minute rounds without any breaks. Mm. That's your that's your test, your your challenge uh-huh. that okay. you have to get through. It's thirty different people coming through and choking you and submitting you oh. for a minute, wow. and then you switch on, you all know, at once, all at once yeah. for thirty minutes straight. And uh, I actually did mine for 32 minutes, um, and my kids were my last one. My two boys came in and rolled with me on my last roll of the night. Oh, cool. Um, so we have that. Other schools have some of that stuff going on where it's kind of a hazing thing, mm-hmm. you know, where you get a belt and they, you you know, walk down through the gauntlet and they whip you. And yeah. I don't know. I, I think that's yes. kind of goofy, but I'm not, yeah. I'm so not judging don't, anybody. If you don't make the 30 minutes, it's like, yeah, sorry, come back and try again yeah, later. Come yeah. back, try again. So, yeah, you see, know. I'm just the opposite. I, I kind of just want to walk through and let, <laughs> let them smack me. I'm yeah, it's pretty brutal. Head, so <clears throat> when I got my blue belt, there was a guy that um, he was a professional fighter. Uh, and he was head of the gym in Springtown, and so we invite other gyms to come over for our blue belt tests and stuff. And and uh, he came over. His name's Chris Vereen. Um, you know, he was at the time he was undefeated, and tough dude. 
and uh, he was one of my first, one of the first guys that rolled with me for my mm. blue belt test, and then also one of the last guys that rolled with me. And uh, so I think he submitted me six times in one minute <laughs> <laughs> towards the end, and just it's Dang. like, uh, yeah. Yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah, tap. <laughs> yeah, he smoked me. But anyway, yeah, that's that's the part of jujitsu that's cool, you know. Yeah. Don't get choked and. And then uh, you walk around town and you look at people and you go, man, I just got choked by some dudes. And mm-hmm. it's like Fight Club, you know? Yeah. Movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. But so, you can tell people about it. Yeah. You yeah. can talk you can about, talk about it. it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So anyway, but yeah. No, I appreciate you guys uh, having me on tonight. Heck yeah, man. Thanks really for being here. That was a lot of yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah. It was a blast. Genuinely yeah. enjoyed it. And Absolutely. thanks for the uh, the keepsake whiskey. Yeah. That's, Absolutely. Yeah. It's a pretty good honor to yeah. have there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Y'all come out and see us in Fort Worth. Definitely. Come enjoy the show. Yeah. I can't wait to bring my little one out and get her involved in that culture. She's going to, she's going to love it yeah it's great for kids see all the big animals oh yeah dude yeah Yeah. and the rodeo the lights the music the show yeah who's the now is bob tallman still alive yes he's actually one of our resident announcers and been there for 40 uh 40 plus years actually he's going on 50 years uh 50 years imagine that that's amazing 50 years announcing the fort worth stock show and rodeo um here in two years i think is going to be He'll, he'll, it'll be his 50th anniversary. Hmm. 50 years. That's incredible. Dude, that's Crazy. wild. Dude. Because you, you know that it didn't start till he was like 20. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so the guy's an old guy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's a, yeah, he's up in his 70s, maybe getting close to 80 now. As he now? Yeah, yeah, he lives in Poolville, so he's oh, really, huh. relatively local. But, uh, yeah, Bob Tallman is still part of our show. Uh, we have some young announcers, uh, Garrett Yerrigan and Anthony Lucia, that we brought on last year. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah, Garrett was our show caller prior to that, but um, we brought him on as announcers, part of the announcing staff last year. So it's um, Bob, Garrett, and Anthony, and they bring some young vibes to the show. But yeah. uh, Bob brings the tradition and the experience oh. and mm-hmm. the voice of the show, the and, familiarity. Yeah, the familiar- I, I can't, um, I can't think of I've, every rodeo I've been there has been Bob Tallman. Yeah. So the, yeah. I can't even imagine somebody else announcing it. Yeah, no, it's uh, man, they those guys have got some massive shoes to fill yeah. coming in behind, you know, with him and behind him. Yeah, uh, obviously the thought process is that at some point Bob is getting to the point where he's going to retire. Sure, but um, we're not we're not encouraging that it's anytime like soon. It's like replacing David Finfrock. Yes. That was just about to say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so how do you David do Finfrock going away. Yeah. yeah. And then for our parents' generation, who was the old weatherman they always yeah, talked about? Uh, uh, that old dude. I, I know exactly yes. who you're Howard talking Taft. about. Howard yes, Taft. Yes, that's yep. it. Yep. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Her- Harold. Harold Taft. Taft. Harold Taft. Taft. That's yeah. it, not Howard. Yep. Yeah. And then Same our deal. generation's Finfrock. And when yeah, he retired, Finfrock. it was like, what am I doing with my life? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to come. I would yeah. love to be able to see the preparation and all the work that goes into uh preparing the night for announcing and everything that's got to be just really cool to be a part of that and see how that works so from a production standpoint uh we have rehearsals believe it or not oh yeah and so we don't just go flip the lights on rodeo time bob does his deal we play some music and all that we actually go through full rehearsals with all of the assets on the center home all of the graphic assets being displayed yeah along with timing and all that sort of thing. We run horses out. We do the whole nine yards with the flag girls. Yeah. And uh, we just go through the whole show. Timing and, has got to be a, a, timing. a crucial of the most important thing. Yeah. That and, uh, you know, now we also have a Cowboy Channel component, so we're, we're broadcast now okay. on television and uh, through the Cowboy Channel. Okay. And so we added commercial breaks to our show uh, two years ago. And so that added a, an approximately 15 to 20 minute uh, time, amount of time to mm-hmm. our overall runtime of our yeah. show. So that was different for us. And so, you know, our timing and all of that changed. And yeah. so, but that's all got to be, you know, we got to continue to fine tune that. And so I would love to bear witness. I don't know how, how hard yeah. it would be to get behind the scenes to see some of that production rehearsal we, stuff going. That'd be really cool. Well, you might know a guy. Okay. Might know a guy. That'd <laughs> be really we, cool to witness We have full that. on uh, run of shows that we operate off of that everybody has access to uh, through Showflow. And um, it's a digital run of show. So you can pull it up on your phone or your yeah. iPad or your computer and follow along. And our show caller uh, space bars down through it. So you know exactly where we're at in the show. Okay. And, um, you know, the Cowboy Channel brings in their uh, girls to interview. We have a pre-show. And, I mean, it's, it's all, all involved. Yeah. Um, you know. Very like cool. 17 different camera angles, 18 different camera angles and yeah. that we can choose from, including PTZ cameras and high-definition yeah. cameras and all the resources. It's a big so, deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Big deal. Big deal. A lot going on. A lot going on. So. Yeah. 
Mm. Well, it's been a true Southern goodbye because this is, I think, I think our third signing off. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Once again, bad. Cal. Thanks, bad. thanks. No, it's it's no. all of our faults. We we all tend to do it. Yep. Thanks again, man. It's been a great night. Absolutely. Yeah. Appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah, all right, yeah. sir. Good night. Adios. You've been listening to the Whiskey Bros Around the Table.